Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. When Clark Kent discovers that a forged order was responsible for the escape of Dr. Deutsch and Hans, two dangerous foreign agents, he exploded a bombshell at the naval base. Commander Leeds, head of the base, and Lewis, a secret service man, were flabbergasted. It meant only one thing, a traitor in their very midst. As we continue today, Deutsch and Hans have eluded the police dragnet and are safe in one of their secret hideouts, an abandoned shack. Kent has returned to the Daily Planet office, and we find him now pleading with Editor White to permit him to drop everything else and devote all his time to rounding up the espionage ring. Listen. I know I could track down Dr. Deutsch, Mr. White. It isn't that I doubt your ability, Kent. Well, then what is your reason for keeping me off this story? Well, Kent, don't you see? We've told the whole world in the pages of the Daily Planet that you're doing a report on Deutsch and his gang for the Navy Department. But, Mr. White, what has the report to do with letting me continue my work? Now, look here, Kent. Deutsch is out to get you. He doesn't want that report ever to be turned in. Well? And he'd do everything he could to get you out of the way before you had time to finish it. But you don't need me to finish the report, Mr. White. Lois can do that. Or you could do it. I've told both of you everything I know. Nothing doing, Kent. You're a newspaper man, not a private detective. But... Tracking down Deutsch and his gang is a job for the Secret Service. Oh, but Mr. White, if, if I did find Deutsch and break up the espionage ring, the Daily Planet would have a terrific scoop. Yes, but in the meantime, I'd probably lose a good reporter. Oh... Stick to your knitting, Kent. Leave the foreign agents to people who know more about them. Look, I know enough about Deutsch to fill a book. After all, I was instrumental in getting the Grayson sub back to the naval base. Well, you'll rest on those laurels. I've been through all this before, Kent. I know how your blood tingles when you think of tracking down a gang of spies, locating them in some secret hideout, rounding them all up. It happens that way in books. But in real life, you'd probably end up with a bullet in your heart. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Bullets don't bother me. Are you crazy? What? What do you mean, that bullets don't bother you? Uh, well, I... I... I, I mean, I, I just wouldn't get in the, in the way of them. I... Kent, sometimes I think you have the mentality of a five-year-old. You just wouldn't get in the way of them. Well, what would you do if someone pointed a gun at your chest and pulled the trigger? I, I suppose you'd uh, just take a deep breath and let the bullet bounce off, eh? Oh, no, no, I I, I couldn't do that, oh, but... forget it, forget it. Well, I, I can't forget it, Mr. White. I want to crack at the job. Why can't I have it? Frankly, Kent, the situation is just this. If I assigned you to track down Deutsch and his gang, I'd be taking the responsibility for your life. I can't do it, Kent, and I won't. Very well, Mr. White. And perhaps I'll have to continue my work without your permission. Well, Kent, you wouldn't... I've got it. Hello. Just a minute. For you, Mr. White. Commander Leeds on the line from the naval base. Oh, thank you. Hello, Commander. Yes, yes, of course. What's that? You want me to do you a special favor? Why, certainly, Commander. Anything you say... And while Editor White and Commander Leeds are talking, two men are secretly eavesdropping on their conversation. Dr. Deutsch and Hans have tapped the telephone wire from the naval base that runs underneath their shack. We can hear them perfectly, Hans. Yeah, Doctor. What's that? You want me to do you a special favor? Why, certainly, Commander, anything you say. Mr. White, I want to borrow Clark Kent from the planet. Borrow him? You hear that, Hans? Yes. I want to use Kent as a special investigator to help us track down Deutsch and his gang. You must fight. Kent's a reporter, not I a... I've simply got to have him, Mr. White. I'm not sure anymore whom I can trust here at the base, but I know I can trust Kent. Very well then, Commander. But you'll have to be responsible for Kent's safety. Naturally. Now listen carefully. I'm sending Mr. Lewis to the planet office in the car, Kent's medic. He'll be there in a few hours to pick Kent up and drive him back to the base. I've got to work fast. He'll be ready, Commander. Uh, one more thing. Yes? Is Kent's report on Deutsch completed yet? Uh, no, I believe he was going to write it today. But don't worry, Commander. Miss Lane can finish that job. Fine. Goodbye then, Mr. White. Goodbye, Commander. Well, things begin to happen, Hans. But, uh, Doctor, who is this man, Lewis? Lewis is a secret service agent. Everything is working out to perfection, Hans. What do you mean? Kent will never get to the naval base. He will be with us here in a few hours. Do have a plan, then? I do not even need a plan. Herr Kent will come to this shack of his own free will. He will come to us. You hear? We do not even have to go and find him. But uh, Kent does not know where they are, the Doctor. You think it is a miracle I will work? Well, perhaps it is. That is our business, Hans. 
working miracles. This is one miracle that must not fail, Herr Doctor. There are three miracles we must do, Hans. We must not only get Kent, we must get Miss Lane and her wife also. We must leave no one who can complete that report. Yeah, but Herr Doctor, I... It is not so difficult as it sounds, Hans. For example, there is much machinery in a newspaper office. Printing machinery? Yes. Printing machinery of all kinds. From giant presses to typewriters, for instance. Could we perhaps get rid of Lois Lane and her wife by using a typewriter? Using a typewriter? I do not understand, Herr Doctor. You are not supposed to understand, Hans. I understand you act. Open that cabinet over there on the wall. Now, what? now what do you see, Hans? A small square package, Herr Doctor, wrapped in brown paper. Take off the paper, Hans. Now what do you see? Why, it is a bomb. Himmel, but it's a small. Small, but powerful, Hans. It's inside my hand. Where did you get it? I said once before, Hans, I do not tell you everything I know. Bring it to me. This bomb is a secret. One is given to each of our agents to use in an emergency. It is a vacuum bomb, Hans. Tremendously powerful. It is designed especially to wreck machinery. To be set off by the movements of wheels and levers. Wunderbar, Herr Doctor. Hans? This bomb should be fitted into a typewriter. Miss Lane's typewriter? Yes, Hans. Miss Lane is writing at her desk. And then suddenly, an explosion. It will blow up if she's writing the report. Yes. That can be arranged. The bomb can explode when a certain word is written. A word that Miss Lane must use in the report. But which word, Herr Doctor? There is one word she must use, Hans. That word is Deutsch. They cannot leave my name out of that report. Yeah. Yeah. And Fräulein Lane types those six letters. D-E-U-T-C-H. She is gone, and the office of the Daily Planet is blown up with her. A magnificent plan, Herr Doctor. Except... Except how are we to carry it out? Is that what you wanted to say, Hans? Yeah, Herr Doctor. I will tell you. Today, you play an important part in the great master plan. You, Hans, are a man who repairs typewriters. Do you understand? But, Herr uh, Doctor... Quiet. You are a man who repairs typewriters. You go to the planet office. You inquire which is Fräulein Lane's typewriter, and you attach the bomb under the keys. I will show you how. I know how to attach the bomb, Herr Doctor. You forget I was once a watchmaker, but... Uh, but what, Hans? How do I get to the planet office? We have no car. We pushed it into the water. I have something better. Here, behind the radio. Set. Look, Hans. A motorcycle. Yeah. No one can stop you. You go like the wind. Very good, Herr Doctor. I will try. And you must not... Fail, Hans. Now, quickly, in the cabinet over there, you will find some overalls. Yeah. Here, let me help you. Here. That's right. A cap. Yeah. So, pull down. Yeah. Now, quickly, the overalls. Yeah. Get into it. That's right. Yeah. And here is a little bag to carry your tools. Yeah. There is a bomb. Here, Hans. You must carry it in your pocket. Carefully. Jawohl. Carefully. Now, mount the motorcycle and get ready. I will open the door for you. Yeah. All ready. You must not... Fail, Hans. I will not fail. Bye, Hans. Wiedersehen. Wiedersehen. Right this way, Mother. Miss Lane's working on something important, so they gave her a private office. Oh, she's not here now. How long will it take you to repair the typewriter? Oh, about 15 minutes. Okay. She's probably in conference with Mr. White and Clark Kent. Now, there's the machine. Oh, thank you. I will go to work immediately. What's wrong with the typewriter? Oh, uh, I, um, I think some of the keys are bent. Mind if I watch you fix them? My name's Jimmy Olsen. I'm head copy boy in the paper. Oh, I'm pleased to know you, but uh, when people watch me, I become nervous. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe it is funny to you, but not to me. Oh, I won't bother you. I'll stand over here. If you insist on watching, close the door, please. The office noise has disturbed me. Oh, sure. That's better. Now, then, let me see. Yeah. Say, what's that little box you're attaching to the bottom of the typewriter? Uh, the box by, um, it is a testing meter. Oh, it doesn't look like a testing meter. It hasn't any dials. Stand back. Hey, wait a minute. I don't like your attitude. I've got a good mind to tell Mr. Wells, the office manager, to hire someone else to repair our typewriter. Get away from that door. What do you mean? I'll show you what I mean. Hey, hey. You have two big, big nose, kinder. Oh. Now, a handkerchief over your mouth. So, oh, I'll steal you, little fool. I must have some strong cord in my pocket. Yeah. Enough to bind your wrists and ankles. 
Yeah. You will not get loose soon. Now, it is this closet with you. Now to lock it and take along the key. I must work fast before anyone comes. This wire here. And this one here. So, it is done. The typewriter is now ready for Miss Lane. Something's wrong with this machine. Keys jammed. That's all right now. Lois, have you seen Jimmy? No, I haven't. Well, you don't have to bark at me. Well, you'd bark too if someone loaded you with a job like this. Do you know it's almost midnight and here I am trying to bang out a report you were supposed to do? Now, look, Miss Lane, don't go off the deep end. I'd be more than happy to write that report, but you know as well as I do that Commander Leeds wants me back at the naval base. Mr. Lewis, the Secret Service man, is calling for me. Mm, I know. Clark can't alias Sherlock Holmes. You always did get the break. Say, how do you spell Deutsch? Uh, D-E-U-T-S-C-H. Well, that doesn't sound right. I don't think there's any F in it. Or maybe there isn't any C. Well, what's the difference? They'll know who it is. Well, it might just as well be right. D-E-U-T-S-C-H. I'm sure there's an S in it, Lois. And I'm sure there isn't. I think it's D-E-U-T-C-H. Doesn't that sound right? I said, doesn't that sound right? Clark Kent, what are you staring at that closet for? Wait a minute. Have you lost your mind? I thought I heard someone moaning. Well, they convinced you that you're a detective, didn't they? Well, don't practice in my office. I've got work to do. Did you decide how to spell Deutsch? Yes, it is C. D E U T C A. Wait a minute. Listen, don't you hear moaning? All I hear is your silly chatter. Now, will you please get out? Someone's in this closet, Lois. It's locked. Oh, nonsense. It's never locked. Well, let me try it. You're right. It is locked. Now, who could have done that? Put your ear close to this crack. Listen. You hear anything? Well, I'm not sure. There. Did you hear that? Yes, what is it? I told you, someone's locked in the closet. See if you can locate a screwdriver. I'll force the lock. There's one in the stock room. I'll get it. Okay. No sense waiting for a screwdriver. I'll just rip the door open as Superman would. What? Jimmy! <laughs> Good heavens, Jimmy, what happened? Here, let me get you out of there. Take that gag off. There. Oh, Jimmy. Almost suffocated, Mr. Kane. Oh. Screw drive across. What? Oh, you got it open. Why, oh, Jimmy. I'm all right, Miss Lane. Just untie the cord around my wrists and ankles. Yeah, wait a minute. I sure made them tight. There. You're loose. Well, Jimmy, what happened? How'd you get in that closet? It's a long story, Miss Lane, but before I begin telling it, there's something important. Don't use that typewriter. Why not, Jimmy? Just don't use it. I'll explain why. Here, now, sit up on this chair. That's better. Oh. Now, what's this all about? Why shouldn't Lois use the typewriter? I've been using it for the last ten minutes. And nothing happened? Well, a few keys got jammed. Jimmy, will you please stop talking in riddles? Turn the typewriter over, Mr. Kent, but be careful. Okay. Now, isn't there a little box attached to the key levers? Yes. What is it? I don't know, but I think it's a bomb or something. A what? Now, don't get excited, Lois. If it is a bomb, it has no timing device. Wait a minute. Let's see how it's hooked up. Who, well, who put it there? The same guy who tossed me in the closet. Oh, I can tell you how to spell Deutsch now, Lois. What's that got to do with a bomb in my typewriter? Plenty. Jimmy's right. This is some sort of infernal mechanism, and it's so wired that the moment the name Deutsch, D-E-U-T-C-H, is typed, it explodes. Oh, Clark. There's no danger now. I've disconnected it. Now we'll just drop it over here in this pitcher of water. Clark, you mean if I'd typed Deutsch's name, the bomb would have exploded in my face? Yes, and probably wrecked the room along with you and Jimmy. What about yourself? Huh? You've been standing here all along arguing with me about how to spell Deutsch's name. Oh, oh yes, I forgot. I, I would have been blown apart, too. Well, now, tell me, Jimmy... Who put that bomb in the typewriter? Well, it was this way, Mr. Kent. A man came to the office and said he'd been called to repair Miss Lane's typewriter. Yes? Repair it? Well, there was nothing wrong with it. Well, I didn't know that. Troy showed him in here. Well, what did he look like, Jimmy? Well, he was sort of short and he had sandy hair and he talked with a little accent. Well, ah, this is beginning to make sense. Go ahead, Jimmy. Well, he started to work on the typewriter and I asked him whether I could watch, but he said no. That sounded kind of funny to me. Uh huh. Then he began fiddling around with that little box you dumped in the water. Yeah. I got suspicious and moved to the door. But before I could open it, he grabbed me, tied a handkerchief around my mouth, and bound my ankles and wrists and tossed me into the closet. Oh, I get cold shivers just thinking what might have happened. You can just imagine how I felt, Miss Lane, locked in the closet and hearing your typewriter going a mile a minute. I thought sure it was the end. You're a brave boy, Jimmy. Yeah, but it was Mr. Kent who got us all out of this. If he hadn't heard me yelling behind that gag, I don't know what would have happened. And how you ever managed to rip down the door, Mr. Kent, I... Well, don't worry about it. It's all over now. It won't be over for me for a long time. Look at the page in that typewriter. I just typed the first four letters of Deutsch's name. D-E-U-T. 
Just two more letters would have exploded that bomb. Oh, Mr. Kenneth, the man just came off the elevator. Oh, it's Mr. Lewis. Hello. Come in a minute, will you? Yeah. He's the Secret Service man from the Naval Base. I'm sorry I'm late, Ken, but I had a flat. Oh, that's all right. Lois, Jimmy, this is Mr. Lewis of the Secret Service. Oh, I think I met the young lady at the Naval Base. The name is Lane, isn't it? That's right. Yes, I think we did meet. Jimmy is our head copy boy who always manages to get into trouble. Oh. <laughs> well, just so long as you get out of it, Jimmy, you're okay, eh? He just managed to get out of some a few minutes ago by the skin of his teeth. See that pitcher of water? Hmm. A little box immersed in it is an action bomb. It was attached to Miss Lane's typewriter. You don't mean that, Ken, huh? Well, he means it all right, Mr. Lewis. We're all lucky we're alive. I'll tell you about it on our way to the naval base. You must be anxious to get back. Uh, yes, I am. All right, let's go. You better leave that report for tomorrow, Lois. Go on home and get some sleep. Same thing goes for you, Jim. And tell Mr. White I'll call him in the morning. So long. So long. Bye, Mr. Lewis. Goodbye, Miss Lane. Goodbye, Jimmy. Bye. Evidently, our friend Deutsch stops at nothing. I'm sure he placed that bomb in the typewriter. From Jimmy's description, it's quite evident the phony typewriter repairman was Deutsch's pal, Hans. Yes, I think you're right, Ken. But what's he got against Miss Lane? Oh, probably the fact that she and Mr. White stumbled on their hideout. The thing that puzzles me is how Deutsch knew Lois had taken over the writing of that report. It was just decided earlier tonight when Commander Leeds called and asked me to report at the naval base. You see, I was supposed to do that report. Oh, on Deutsch and his activities? Yes. How much do you know about Deutsch? Oh, enough to put him behind bars for life if we ever catch him. Really? Why, certainly. That submarine incident alone would be sufficient, and I was right in on that. <laughs> you like this sort of work, don't you, Ken? <laughs> yes, I do. It's more exciting than routine reporting. I guess you Secret Service men are pretty fed up with it. Oh, you get hardened. Commander Lead seems to have a lot of faith in you. Well, I hope I can justify it. Mm -hmm. You know, Kent, I was thinking it mightn't be a bad idea to stop at Deutsch's old hideout, that house on the cliff, and see whether anything's turned up. I understand the place is being guarded, and it's on our way, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, you take a left turn off the main road. You can't miss it. There's an old oak tree that must have been struck by lightning right where you make the turn. In fact, I think that's it up ahead. Slow down, will you? Uh -huh. Yes, that's the place. Turn left here and drive right to the ocean. You've been inside the old house, haven't you, Kent? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, since once, just for a few minutes. <laughs> Quite a place. That fellow Deutsch did things in a big way. Basement of the house, Look out! nothing... Someone in the road! <laughs> Stupid old fool, we almost killed him. He's coming over. Hey, you! What's the big idea standing in the middle of the road? Hold on a minute! Hold on! Are you two government fellas? Well, what if we are? Well, I've got something to tell you. Aren't you the caretaker of that big house on the cliff? That's right. How'd you know? Well, uh, I think we met once before. Well, are you government fellas? Yes, we are. What do you want? There's something suspicious going on here. We know all about that. You don't know about this because I just discovered it myself. Down at the cove. Where? Down at the cove, down yonder. There's an old shack down there that Judd Comby used to use to warm himself when he went ice fishing. Well, what about the shack? Well, there's people in it. So what? Probably a couple of tramps. Oh, no, they ain't. Tramps don't drive up in no fancy car and then push it into the water. They pushed a car into the water? Yes, sir. I've seen it with my own eyes. Don't get in 30 feet, they did. Oh, let's get going, Kent. This man's crazy. Now, I heard that, mister. If you think I'm crazy, you go on down to that shack. I did. If them tramps, I'll eat a bale of hay. Maybe we'd better take a look, Lewis. Pushing a car into the water sounds like our friend Deutsch. Particularly if it was an official car. Well, sounds like a pipe dream to me, but let's go. Where is this shack, Pop? Well, you make a right turn down a dirt road about 200 feet up. And you follow that until it ends in the woods near the water. I, uh, I think you'd better come along, Pop, and show us the way. Yeah, I'd be glad to. All right, hop in. Now, the road's right with them cedars, Lane. Now, take it easy, mister. It's rutted. Yeah. Here? Yeah, that's it. Did you notice what kind of a car they pushed into the water? Nope, I didn't. It's pretty dark. Well, what makes you think it was a car? Might have been an elephant. Elephants don't have motors and headlights, mister. You better stop here. We can walk the rest of the way. And in a far piece. Oh, is that the shack down by the shore? Yep. Belongs to Judd Cornby. I huh? don't see any lights. Yeah, maybe they left. But I ain't seen nobody come out of this road. Well, we've come this far, so we might as well look the shack over. This path must lead to it. Yep, it does. Now, wait a minute. Hmm? In case there is someone in the shack, we'd be better off approaching it from two sides. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll go along the beach, Kent. You and Pop head down this path. All right. If you need me, whistle three times. Okay. Hmm. That fellow's a little too smart, Alecky, for me. <laughs> you mustn't let him scare you. He's a Secret Service man. They're pretty hard. Well, all I got to say is that we're liable to run into a heap of trouble if the fellas that got rid of that car are still in the shack. How many men did you say you saw pushing that car into the water? Well, I didn't say, mister, but I recollect there was two. Uh huh. They waited till she sunk, and then they went into the shack. I got a feeling that maybe it's them foreign fellas who was using the big house on the cliff. You know about them, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, that's why I stopped you on the road to tell you. Uh huh. I figured you was government fellas. 
There's been a whole posse of them roaming around the big house. Yeah. Uh, we better go easy now. We're nearing the shack. Where's that Secret Service feller? Well, I can't see him from here, but he's approaching the shack from the beach. Hmm? Uh, we're about as close as we can get now without busting in. See anything? No, not a thing. I'll try the door. You better be careful, mister. Drop down! Uh, uh, I'm hit, mister. Oh, easy now, take it easy. I knew it. I knew there'd be trouble. Oh, where were you hit? Uh, hit. Right here. Oh, over the heart, that's bad. Uh, I'll get you to a doctor, don't worry. Now, you'll be all right. Uh, I can't move. Steady now. I won't last long. Not very long. Not very Oh, he's gone. I suppose I should tear into that shack as Superman and make them pay for this. But that wouldn't get me what I want. Deutsch may be the brains of this gang, but I need him to lead me to the rest of them. I wonder where Lewis is. He must have heard those shots. That should bring him running. Oh, probably shooting at him, too. Well, I've got to get inside that shack as Clark Kent. It's the only way I can learn anything. I give up! Stop shooting! Come forward with your hands in the air. All right. He had you covered with two guns. Don't try any funny work. Stop where you are. Open the door, Hans. Put the gun in his back. Bring him in. Yeah, yeah, doctor. Go ahead. Inside. All right. Turn on the light, Hans. I have him covered. I won't. I have him covered. I won't. So, Herr Kent, again we have the honor of entertaining you, eh? But this time, the circumstances are slightly different, no? The circumstances don't matter, Dr. Deutsch. It's always a pleasure to see you. That, Herr Kent, is what you call sarcastic. I would suggest that you dispense with the clever remarks. Oh. How many men are with you? I'm all alone. You lie. We saw three men get out of the car. We are not stupid, Mr. Kent. Well, since you know how many there were, why ask me? Because I choose to, and I expect an answer. Where is the third man? The third? You heard me. We have accounted for you as a secret service man, Lewis. Where is he, sir? Well, if you must know, you murdered him. He's out there in front of the shack. Who is he? Just a harmless old man, a local resident. Well, he is certainly harmless now, even if he was not before. I... Keep your hands up. Search him, Hans. Edison, the boss. Good. You may lower your hands, Mr. Kent. Thank you. Keep a sharp lookout at the window, Hans. Yeah. Well, you've got quite a setup here, Dr. Deutsch. Shortwave sending and receiving set, photographic apparatus. And what's that big control board with all the fancy dials? That is none of your business, Herr Kent. Oh. You know, by all that is right, I should shoot you down like a dog. Well, what are you waiting for? You've got the gun. No. You are worth more alive than dead, at least for the present. I have a few scores to set you, and you will help me set this up. Really? Yes, really. After that is done... You will suffer the penalty of having interfered with my plans. I suppose Mr. Lewis will suffer the same penalty. There is no question about that. Hmm? Where is he? In a safe place. It's enough of these questions. I will ask a few. I understand Miss Lane met with an accident. Is that true? No. No, it isn't. Fortunately, we found the bomb in time. Huh? Hans, you hear that? Yeah, Doctor. I hear it. That is too bad. We will have to devise another method. What is that? A storm, Herr Doctor. Contact Schmidt by radio. Tell him he will send the plane over within the hour. Yeah, Herr Doctor. You must have quite an organization, Deutsch. More than you can imagine, Herr Kent. That is why we cannot lose. You will see shortly how well organized we are. But first, let me have the papers from your pocket. What for? Never mind. Give them to me. All right. Here they are. You have here what is called a police card with your signature on it? Yes. Good. Well, Hans? The tubes are warming, Doctor. I will call him now. Six, four, nine, pump open. Six, four, nine, pump open. Six, four, nine, pump open. With Kent, a willing captive, in order to learn more about Deutsch and his gang, and the whereabouts of Lewis, a mystery, the little shack on the cove is a scene of tense drama as a storm breaks over it. Meanwhile, back at the Daily Planet office, Lois Lane is still working on the report. Jimmy, you still here? I thought Mr. Kent told you to go home. Well, he told you the same thing, Miss Lane. Well, I have work to do. Now run along home. Oh, I'm not tired. Oh, Miss Lane, a messenger just delivered this envelope from Mr. White. It's marked important. Let me see it. Hmm. Editor Perry White, Daily Planet Building. Important. Deliver at once. Now, who could be sending an important message at this hour? When did Mr. White leave, Jimmy? Oh, a long time ago. Well, maybe I'd better open it. 
typewritten. Jimmy, it's from Clark Kent. No fooling. Listen. Dear Mr. White, I need your help. Please come at once. I have drawn a map to show you where I will meet you, Clark Kent. Well, there's a map, all right. Gee, what do you think it is, Miss Lane? Well, I don't know, but I think I'd better call the police. Well, I wouldn't do that if I were you. If Mr. Kent wanted the police, you would have asked for them. I need your help. Please come at once. I'll call Mr. White. Hate to do it at this hour. Oh, wasn't Mr. Kent supposed to go to the naval base with that secret service man? And so I understood. Oh, gee, according to this map, he's nowhere near there. Wait a minute. Let me see that map. Good heavens, you know where he is? No, where? About half a mile away from that house on the cliff. The house Dr. Dorch was using as a hideout. There's no answer it, Mr. White. Well, I don't know what to do, Jimmy. I know what I'm going to do. What? I'm going down there to help Mr. Kent. Jimmy, don't be silly. Give me that letter, Jimmy. So long, Miss Lane. See you later. Jimmy, Jimmy, come back. Jimmy. Gee, mister, it sure was nice of you to pick me up. It's just going to save me a lot of hiking. Where'd you say you were going? To the old ocean road. Yeah? What's down there? Well, I've got to meet a friend of mine. You don't have to take me that far if it's out of your way. Yeah. I'm chucking this load of flour into the city, but I ain't in no hurry. I'll drop you off, son. Oh, gee, thanks. Oh, listen to that thunder. There's a storm coming. How's your dog? He's fast asleep in my lap. You know, I just picked him up on the road about an hour ago. When it started thundering, he came running out of the bushes. I guess he was frightened. Yeah, dogs don't like thunder. He's a funny-looking mutt, but I kind of like him. <laughs> I'm going to call him Storm because he came to me on account of the thunderstorm. Say, feel his ears. They're like silk. Yeah, they are. I never had a dog. Sometimes when you're alone, a dog can be a great friend. Yeah. You like dogs, mister? Yeah, I like him. I had one once, but he got run over. Oh, that's too bad. Look, he's waking up. Hiya, Storm, old fella. <laughs> he sure sounds happy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Well, we turn in here. Old Ocean Road's up away. It's a funny place to meet anyone. Well, you see, it's a special friend of mine. Oh, it's all right, Storm. Don't be frightened. <laughs> well, here you are. Old Ocean Road. Oh, thanks a lot, mister. Right. Call out, Storm. Come on, hop down. Atta boy. Yeah, I don't see nobody waiting for you, son. Oh, my friend must be around somewhere. I'll find him. <laughs> Storm, come back. Hey, Storm. Ah, oh, you ran into the woods. He's chasing her at me. I've got to find him. Storm. Wait, I'll help you look for him. Storm. Hey, Storm. He went that way. Come on, son. Here, Storm. Here, Storm. Oh, that ought to bring him back. I see him. He's down at the water. Maybe he's thirsty. Ah, that's dog water, boy. Hey, what's that big thing down there? What? It's a seaplane. Look the size of it. Yeah, now, what do you suppose a seaplane's doing there? Gee, I don't know. Here, Storm. Here, boy. Something about that seaplane your dog likes. Look at him. He hopped up on the wing. Hey, Storm, get down off there. Storm. <laughs> Nothing doing. Look at him. He hopped right into the cabin. i got to get him out. Uh, can you lift me up on the wing, please? Mm, I guess so. Don't fall off. That water's plenty deep there. Here, get a grip on my shoulder. Okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> up you go. Okay. Watch it now, son. Don't slip. Oh, I'm all right. I'll crawl along to the cabin. Join that dog. If he wasn't such a funny-looking mud, I'd leave him here. But nobody else would want him. How you doing? Swell. I'm climbing into the cabin. Storm, where are you? Gosh, it's dark in here. Storm. Oh, where'd he go? Storm. Oh, there you are. Come here, you crazy pooch. Storm, look out. You'll get me. Ouch. Right into the instrument panel. Gosh, what happened? We're taking off. Help. Help. Before the rain comes, we'd better go down and see that the plane is properly moored. There will be a high wind coming. Yeah, yeah, Doctor. I go. Where is this plane you've been talking about, Deutsch? Moored in the cold. It is a very special seaplane. You asked us all about the control board with all the dials. That is for the plane. Oh, radio control. Exactly. More perfect even than human hands. But you will see how it works. You will be flying in it shortly. You're being very kind to me, Deutsch. Not so kind, Herr Kent. It will be the last flight you ever take. I don't think so, Deutsch. I have an idea I'll be flying for a long time. And not in plane. <laughs> I see what you mean. The wings, eh? I must say, Kent, you are a man of courage. Facing certain death, you can make jokes. What do you intend doing with me? I'm going to send you to Volcano Island, where you will be very taken care of until I have no further use for you. Oh? And where is Volcano Island? Not too far from here. Is that the headquarters of your ring? I suppose you might call it that. On the island, Kent, the master plan is being worked out carefully. 
From there will come the final stroke that will bring the world to its knees. Well, it sounds very ambitious. What is the master plan? Now you are becoming too inquisitive. Let it suffice to say that it's the plan of domination that cannot possibly fail. When it's put into effect, my people will rule the universe. You will not have a very pleasant trip, Herr King. Herr Doctor, the plane! What is it? The plane is gone! How? Oh, it's possible! It is gone, Herr Doctor! The mooring lines are broken! Are you mad? I did not believe it myself! Tune in the radio control! Watch there! Yeah. How did we set the plane before we left it? Southeast by south! Turn the compass dial! Southeast by south! Yeah. Stay where you are, Herr Kent. Remember, I still hold this revolver. I have it, Herr Doctor. The plane is in the air at 5,000 feet. Bring her back! I have lost it. The storm is material. Bring it again, you. What's the problem, Hans? It's impossible. It's all in the storm. Give it for power. Yeah, yeah. That does it. Now it is level. Change the course. Bring her back. I'm afraid, Herr Doctor. Afraid of what? There's not enough gasoline to bring it back. How far is it from the island? Not more than 30 miles. It has gas enough to carry it there, of course. Yeah. It cannot tell who is on the plane. Whoever it is must never reach the island alive. You will have to sacrifice the plane. Direct it into the mouth of the volcano, Hans. See the volcano? It will disappear. Precisely. Then there will be no wreckage to trace. Nothing floating to shore. In the volcano it will crash. There will be no trace of the plane and no trace of its passengers. But could we not land the plane on an island? No. We can take your chances. Do as I say. Yeah, yeah, Doctor. Unaware that Jimmy Olsen is the only passenger aboard the storm-tossed radio control plane, Clark Kent stands by as Dr. Deutsch orders it directed into the cavernous heart of the extinct volcano. Meanwhile, aboard the plane itself, Jimmy awaits what he believes will be certain destruction, his mongrel dog whimpering in his lap. Don't be frightened, old fellow. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Gosh, I wish I knew how to run this plane. To make matters worse, the motors are given out. This thing suddenly decides to take a nosedive. I can't understand how this plane is flying without any pilot. Maybe I'm dreaming. Gosh, if lightning ever strikes this plane, we're gone, Storm. Guess it doesn't matter much. We're probably gone as anyway. I don't know why you had to jump into the cabin and make me follow you. What were you looking for? Oh, it wasn't your fault, Storm. You didn't know. Here now, you just stay right here on the seat while I go up front and try to play with the controls again. Maybe I can do something. I'll be right back. You're pitching and tossing. I don't know how this plane stays up the way it does in all this wind. Let's see, the controls are over here. That's right. Oh, let's see if I can plug them. No, they're all locked. Except the one I bumped against when we took off, and I can't get that back either. It doesn't look too good. I wonder where we are. Over the ocean, I guess. I can't see a thing through the window. The motors are missing worse than ever. See the dropping lower. Storm! Storm! Well, Hans, how is it coming? Good, Herr Doctor. The course of the radio plane is set into the volcano? Yeah. You don't care how you kill, as long as you kill. Isn't that so, Deutsch? Your comments do not interest me at the moment, Herr Kent. They'll interest you sooner or later. They'll interest a court of law, too. The Grayson murder, the murder of the old caretaker. No doubt Lewis's murder, and now this. You know too much, my young friend. Far too much. And because of that knowledge, you will give up your life. On Volcano Island? On Volcano Island. I can think of no pleasanter place to die. You will change your mind, I can promise you. You still have control, Hans. Yeah, good control. The plane is the island in a few minutes. I cannot understand who could have taken it. Herr Doctor, there was something I forgot. What is it? This I found on the shore near the moon. Eh? Oh, a cat. Let me see that cat. Possibly you know the owner, Herr Ken. I said let me see it. Why not? Here. Eh? Whose cat is it? Deutsch, you'd better bring that plane down to a safe landing. Are you out of your mind? You heard what I said. Bring that plane down safely. Stop this nonsense. This isn't nonsense. Stay away from that door. Sorry, Deutsch, but you forced me to leave. There's something I've got to do. Stand back, Kate, or I shoot you down. I warn you. So long. I'll be seeing you. You wasted bullets, Deutsch. Clark Kent has given way to Superman. That cat belonged to Jimmy Olsen, and if he's in that plane, I've got to save him before it dives into the volcano. Up! Up! 
I don't see how any plane can stay aloft in weather like this. I hope I'm wrong about that being Jimmy's cap, but I don't think so. It was the same color, and it had that British Air Corps insignia on it, the one I gave Jimmy last week. Southeast by south is the course the plane is on. Should be overtaking at any moment now. Oh, I wish it wasn't so dark. Even my eyes can't pierce this curtain of rain for any distance. If I can only spot the island and all this ocean, I could get there before the plane. What's that dark patch below? That's the island. And there's the plane, diving straight for that dead volcano. Down! Down! I can't get in front of it. There isn't time. I'll have to grab the tail and pull it into the sea. Faster. Faster. Now! Got it! Into the ocean with it. Now, oh, I'll have to smash the side in to get Jimmy out. Oh, he's unconscious. Best thing to do, I guess, is get him ashore. He'll be all right, Jim. As good as new. Up and away! Ah, storm seems to have died. Well, that's a help. Jimmy's coming, too. Gonna be awfully surprised to see Clark Kent, but I think I can explain. Uh, Jim. Oh. Where am I? You're okay, Jim. Mr. Kent. How? What happened? Uh, just take it easy for a minute. You had a tough time with it. Plane it. Started to fall. Yes, I know. But how did you get here, Mr. Kent? Why, uh, I was tied up in the rear compartment of the plane. When it crashed into the sea, I got loose. I pulled you out and swam to this island. Where's Storm? Who? Storm, my dog. Your dog? Yes, sir. I picked him up on the road. He was in the plane with me. What happened to him? Uh, I didn't see any dog, Jimmy. Oh, gosh, you must have drowned. Gee, Mr. Kent. He was such a swell dog. I don't know what I'm... Storm! You all right? Mr. Kent, he swam to shore. Oh, good old Storm. You found me, didn't you? Yeah, oh boy. Isn't he swell, Mr. Kent? Oh, he's, he's awful funny looking. That's why I like him. Right down, Storm. Had a fella. He minds me perfectly. Say, where are we, Mr. Kent? On an island. I think it's called Volcano Island. But tell me, how did you happen to get into that plane? Oh, you won't blow me out, will you? Blow you out? Why should I? Because I did something I maybe shouldn't have. What? Well, we got a message at the office. Wait a minute, Jimmy. I hear a plane. So do I. Uh, It's coming nearer. There it is. Over to the left. Circling and coming down. Do you think it'll land? I can see where it can land. Look, Jimmy. It's heading straight for that cliff. It's going to crash. I can't look. Jimmy. The cliff's opening up like like a huge door. Listen to it rumble. Well, for... Jimmy, did you see that? No, I wasn't looking. I had my eyes covered. Where's the plane? Well, you won't believe this because I can hardly believe it myself. The cliff opened up and the plane flew inside. See? Look, Mr. Kent, the plane's gone. Gosh, it flew right inside the volcano. Oh, it is. Now the cliff's swinging shut. Solid face of stone moving on hinges. I wonder what could be inside. Well, I have a pretty good idea what's inside. Did you take a good look at that airplane as it flew over our heads? No, why? Well, it was a plane just like the one you crashed in. Another of Deutsch's radio controlled ships. Gosh. Well, who do you suppose was in it? I don't think there's any question, Jimmy. It was Dr. Deutsch and Hans. Oh, golly, maybe they traced us here somehow. Maybe, Jimmy. But I think they're doing more than just following us. This island is the headquarters of Deutsch's whole gang. He was going to bring me here and get rid of me. Gosh, maybe they were discovered on the mainland and had to make a quick getaway. I don't think so, Jimmy. While they were holding me, I learned that Deutsch has completed his work on the mainland. He's ready now to put what he calls the master plan into operation. What's the master plan? Well, I don't know, but I can assure you it's important from Deutsch's point of view. I think I'll take a look around. You stay here. There must be some way of getting inside that hollow volcano, don't you think? That's exactly what I'm going to find out. Now, you wait here for me. I'll be right back. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent. Can't Storm and I go with you? No, Jimmy. Now, you do as I say. You and your dog get undercover in a good hiding place. Here, under this tree behind the big rock. Oh, listen to me. Don't move, no matter what you see or hear, understand? Yes, but suppose something happens to you, Mr. Kent. Don't you worry about me. Just sit tight. I'll be back soon. Now, remember, don't move. Stay there. Oh, gee whiz. I always get left out of everything. What is it, Storm? Say, what's that moving through the bushes? Stand where you are, my young friend. What? Don't move, or this gun I am pointing at you goes off. Raise your hands over your head. I turn around and face me. Gosh, who are you? You do not remember me. The typewriter man. Yeah, precisely so. Finish the man who was with you. He's gone. You won't get him. We will see. 
Now, start marching. Where are you taking me? Some place where you will have plenty of time. There's nothing to do except talk. But talk to whom? About what? You will talk to Dr. Deutsch and to me. About many things. Like how did you and your Mr. Kent get to this island? You'll never find out from me. Well, Mr. Kent gets hold of you. Just wait. Your Mr. Kent will fall directly into our hands. Yeah. They'll come looking for you like a mouse for a cheese in a trap. And then we will have you. Both of you. A very nice bag for one day's hunting, Kinder, huh? Now hold. Hold. Say, what are we stopping here for? In front of you is a hollow tree, nine. Inside is an elevator. An elevator? In that tree? Gosh. So, here they go underground into the bowels of the island. Take a last look at the beautiful world. The trees and the bushes and the sky. Next, you will see only the iron bars of a cell. Now, I will blindfold you. So, now, into the tree. Optional. Meanwhile, back at the naval base on the mainland, Commander Leeds is still trying to track down Deutsch and Hans, who escaped after being captured on the stolen Grayson submarine. Baffled also by the mysterious disappearance of Clark Kent and Lewis, the Secret Service man, who are en route to his office, Commander Leeds is furious. All right, then make it a five-state alarm. Block every road. I'm going to find Deutsch and hand if it's the last thing I do. Yes, sir. And bring me bulletins every quarter hour. I want a complete check on ship movements, movements of airplanes, everything on wheels are in the air. Very good, sir. First, Deutsch and his henchmen escape right from under our noses because of a traitor here at the naval base. And now we can't even find Kent and Lewis, the two investigators we put on the case. I'll be the laughing stock of the department. Come in, come in. Uh, Lewis! Hey, Jesus, man, where have you been? What happened to you? You're a wreck. I, I barely made it to your office, Commander. Here, sit down there. Oh. Here, take a drink of water. Thank you. I just managed to get away from him by the skin of my teeth. I had to hitch high grinds to get here. Didn't even have one at the telephone. Just got away from whom? What happened? Where's Kent? Where's Kent? Yes. Isn't he here? What are you talking about, man? We're scouring the country for both of you. Didn't you pick up Kent at the Data Planet office? Yes, but we stumbled on Deutsch. Deutsch? And... Yes, we were tipped off by the caretaker of Deutsch's old hangout. Yes. We investigated an old shack on the deserted beach where we found him. Deutsch and his henchmen caught us and had us locked up in the shack. Yeah. Somehow, Kent got away. I naturally figured he was on his way to contact you. So did Deutsch. So he burned down the shack. Well, how did you get away? And what's happened to Deutsch? Well, uh, you see, I was... Uh, beg pardon, sir. What is it, orderly? The Coast Guard just telephoned, sir, to say that the Sheridan lightship reported sighting a plane heading out to sea at dawn. A passenger plane. No markings, no number. What was its course? South by east, sir. All right, thank you. Now, what were you saying, Royce? Well, uh, uh, Commander, I, I don't like to say this, but... Say what? I know how much faith you put in Clark Kent. Yes? What about it? Well, I want you to trust me just as you trust him. Exactly what's on your mind, Louis? Just this, Commander. I have a hunch. I think I know where Deutsch can be located and where Kent is, too. Now, I want you to let me go off on my own hook, just disappear... And work something out my own way. Of course, Lewis. But tell me, what's your idea? I'm sorry, I can't even tell you that. It's difficult to explain. I, I, I can't, that's all. You must trust me. Very well, Lewis. I'll trust you. Thank you, Commander. Now, I'm going to disappear for about three days, during which you will call off the hunt for me and make no attempt to contact me. Just as you say, Lewis. I hope this idea of yours is fruitful. I've got to have some action soon. Don't worry, Commander. You'll get action, and plenty of it. Oh, excuse me. Commander Lee speaking. That's right, five state alarm. Have them picked up on site. Oh, and by the way, cancel the alarm for Lewis. Yes, he's been located. Back in Volcano Island, Clark Kent as Superman, unaware of Jimmy's capture, has found an entrance to Deutsch's underground headquarters and is moving quietly through a narrow tunnel. Oh, it's dark in here. I've been following passages downhill for a long time. It must end someplace. Wait. There's a glimmer of light up ahead. I'm getting brighter. All right, this looks like a kind of jail up ahead. Well, I'll be... It's a cell block. So, Deutsch has his own prison, too, eh? I'll just take a look. See who's locked up in here. Hmm. All empty, eh? Wait. What? Sounds like someone crying. I'll creep up quietly for a look. What? It's Jimmy. I wonder how he got here. I'd better investigate this. That's Clark Kent. Jimmy, what are you doing here? Mr. Kent. Oh, gosh, are you a sight for sore eyes? Well, what happened, Jimmy? Who brought you here? I was sitting out of sight just as you told me, and then... Yes? I couldn't even run for it, Mr. Kent. He was right on top of me. 
Who was, Jimmy? Well, the typewriter man who planted that bar on What? Hans, they call him here. He had a gun and he threatened to shoot. He did, did he? How long have you been in this cell? About 20 minutes, I guess. Say, how did you manage to get in? Oh, I, uh, I investigated the cave and followed it up here. But look, have you told them anything? I mean, about our being here and how we got to the island? Not a worry. Hans locked himself in here with me and kept threatening me if I refused to talk. Finally, he got disgusted and left. Oh. But they know you're here and they've set a trap for you. Oh, they have, eh? Well, we'll see if we can't fool them. First, we've got to get you out. Well, that's easy. You pull a lever at the end of the hall. It opens all the cell doors. Oh, yes, I see. Hurry, Mr. Kent. Somebody's coming. Once more. Once more. Jimmy, I'll follow you. Can you see anything? Out of the top of here. All right, keep going. You have to take a chance with whatever is up there. There we are. Now, I'll tiptoe, Jimmy. Gosh, I hope we don't meet anyone in this tunnel. It's awful narrow. Well, as long as it's dark, they can't see us. All we have to do is be quiet. Wait. Look up ahead. Red glow. Listen. Well, sounds like a lot of picks and shovels. What would anybody be digging for here? Come on, Jim. We'll find out. There's a curve just ahead. Uh, that glow we saw is a reflection on the wall. Do you think it's from an underground fire? No, Jimmy. Flares. Whoever it is is working by torchlight. Sounds like a large crew of men. Yeah. What do you think they're digging? Well, they might just be extending the length of this particular tunnel. Wait a minute, though. Listen to it. These walls are solid rock. They don't dig with shovels into solid rock, Mr. King. You're right, Jimmy. We're at the curve now. Do you think we ought to go on? They might see us. Well, not if we stick close to the wall. Here, keep hold of my hand, though. Careful now. Look. It's a pit, Mr. King. Yes. And as big as a football stadium. And hundreds of men all chin. That's what we're going to find out, Jimmy. Well, how? We can't take a chance on being seen. Of course not. We've got to be careful. Jimmy, look down there on the floor of the pit. That dark, shiny stuff they're loading into those little dump trucks. Maybe it's coal. No, Jimmy. Radium. You mean that black stuff is radium? Pitch blend. The basic ore of radium. Come on. Where are we going? Back along this passage the way we came. But we can't go back into the main corridor. Glitch and his men will catch us, sure. We're not going into the main passage. We're just going to nose around a little. It really is pitch blend they're digging. There must be solution tanks nearby to process the stuff. You really think so? That's what I'm hoping. Hey, give me a hand, Jimmy. I don't want to lose you. Hey, what's the can, pal? Jimmy! Jimmy, where are you? No sign of him. Jimmy! Jimmy! Great heavens. A hole in the floor. Good thing I can see in the dark. Jimmy must have dropped through. It's deep, too. Jimmy! Jimmy, are you down there? Yes. At the bottom of a pit. Are you all right? I... I think so. I can't understand why I didn't break my neck. I'm coming down, Jimmy. Sergeant, they can't be careful. It's a long drop. Don't worry about me. Here I come. <laughs> ah, I made it. Are you okay? Uh-huh. Oh, what happened up there? Did you walk into the hole? No, the floor just gave way under me. That's funny. What's that? Sounded like rocks going down an iron chute. It's coming from over there. Come on, Jimmy, let's find out what it is. Wait, I just kicked something felt like a rock. Pick it up. I've got one match. I'm going to light it and see what this is all about. Ah, it's a piece of pitch blend. Jimmy, we're at the bottom of a huge metal vat. This is where they treat the ore with acid. Oh, good golly, Mr. Kent. How are we going to get out before they pour in the acid? Uh, you just stick close to me, Jimmy. I'll feel my way around the wall of this chamber. Must be a place where they draw off the solution. I'm loading it up with pitch blend. that outlet before they pour in the acid. No, there's no opening on this side. All right, come on, let's, let's look on the opposite side. Gosh, I hope we find the outlet soon. No, 
Yeah, wait. Here's something. Feels like hinges. Look at that now. Yes, it's a door. Wait, I'll try to push it open. It's coming. Yes. You've done it, Mr. Ken. It's open. All right, now I'll hold it while you duck out. Okay. It's not very wide. Oh, wait a minute. Seems to be a drop here. Well, I'm sure it's all right. Just let yourself down easy. All right, now out you go. Okay. All right. Out of the way, Jimmy. I'll squeeze through. <sighs> well, Jimmy, I was right. That was the bath. This must be the room where they leave the solution to settle. Those big copper kettles. Yes, Jimmy, there's no question about it. Deutsch and his gang are making pure radium on this island. Evidently, it has a tremendous deposit of pitch blenders. Mr. Kent, what do they use the radium for? Well, I don't know, Jimmy. Except that in some way it must be tied up with their master plan. Listen. What is it, Mr. Kent? Someone moaning. Sounds like it's coming from through that wall there. Look, there's a door. Well, let's try it. We're ready to run, Jimmy. We don't know what we're getting into. Okay. All right, here we go. First these bolts. <coughs> be very quiet, Jimmy. I'm going to open the door. As Kent and Jimmy prepare to track down the mysterious activity in the hollow volcano, Dr. Deutsch, furious over Jimmy's escape from his cell and their inability to find Kent, is angrily reprimanding Hans, his henchman. Hans, you are an idiot. The king of all idiots. Yeah, doctor, the boy was locked in his cell when I left him. Locked in his cell when you left him. First, you cannot get any information out of him. Then he escapes. A little boy. Just a little boy. And not one of the hundreds of men I have on this island can find him. He has outdated all of you. But we will find him. Give us time here, doctor. The island is large. There are miles of tunnels. I warn you. He will be found, Hans, or you will suffer for it. Yeah, doctor. I understand. He will be found. Not only will the boy be found, Hans, that's the man who was with him. Yeah, well, Doctor. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Two people at the edge of the pitch blend vine? A man and a boy? That must be the boy who escaped from us and the man who was with him. Make a search for them at once. And if you value your neck, you will find them and bring them here to me. Yes. And report to me every 15 minutes. The man and the boy, the air shaft from the pitch blend mine, standing there, watching. And your men are looking for him. Hans, how much radium have we on hand? Here's the report, Doctor. Eight ounces, two grams. A total of only eight ounces, two grams from the richest pitch blend deposit in the world. It won't do. But that, Doctor, it takes over 300,000 tons of pitch blend to produce only one ounce of radium. So, have we not the most modern machinery? And not the bats the largest in the world? Yeah, here, Doctor, but the problem is not the richness of the ore deposits or even the equipment. Well, what is it then? Speak up. Manpower. The men are very here, Doctor. Worn out. They cannot dig fast enough to fill the bats. There are not enough of them for three complete ships. Hans, you sit here and drool about manpower. Do not come to me with such nonsense. Get more men. But, Herr Doctor, how? The same way we got the others. But it is so risky. If we go too far, there will be an investigation. You take that chance. We must take that chance. Have all, Herr Doctor. But if we are found out, then all is lost. The master plan, everything. Schweinhund! How dare you offer an opinion? You do as you're told. If we do not take that chance, then the master plan cannot succeed. It is seven o'clock. By midnight. I will expect you to have more men. You understand? By midnight. Back in the dark reduction chamber, Kent and Jimmy have opened a heavy iron door to investigate moaning sounds that seem to come from the next room. Whatever it is, it lives in the dark. It's not an animal, Jimmy. That's a human voice. I'll bet on it. Now, you stay here and hold the door open, just in case we've got to get out fast. We don't want to get trapped in there. Okay, are you all right? So far. What? It's an old man. Open the door wide. Let's get a little light in here. Oh, I'll be... Jimmy, he seems to be moaning in his sleep. No, no. Get out of here. I won't touch your machines again. Never, never. Leave me alone. Now, take it easy, old fellow. We're friends. Come in, Jimmy. Pull the door closed. All right, Mr. King. Tell me. Who are you? My name's Clark Kent. I'm a newspaper reporter. This is Jimmy Olsen. Who are you? Uh, who am I? Yes. Why, I've almost forgotten. They used to call me Julius Browning. What? Professor Julius Browning before 
All this. Gosh. I recognize the name, Professor. You held the chair in radiology at Oxford, if I remember correctly. That was before you disappeared on an expedition to investigate a rich radium deposit. Yes, that's right. Well, what happened, Professor? Why are you a prisoner here? Uh, that man, Deutsch, he came to me posing as a fellow scientist with the money to develop these rich deposits of radium ore. It had been a dream of mine for years to get enough radium so that all the sick could benefit from it, so that all science could experiment with it freely. Naturally, I jumped at the chance to go along with Deutsch. And now you're his prisoner. Even worse than that. I'm forced to run his machines. When I've done all I can to keep his plant in operation, he imprisons me here. Are you strong enough to walk, Professor? I'll find the strength somehow. If it means coming back from this living death, I can do anything. All right, let me help you. Here, Jimmy, take his other arm. Yes, I'll do it. There. Now, if you'll help me, I'm sure I can manage it. Uh, your strength will come back, Professor. You'd better be quiet. Somebody might be coming for Professor Brown. I'll take a look before we go out. All right. Coast clear? All clear. Professor, you can probably tell us how to get out of here. Yes, I can. Look there, behind that vat. There's a door. Oh, good. It leads into one of the secondary tunnels. Opens directly onto the beach. Ah, here we are. Jimmy, open the door. Oh, look. I can see the ocean from here. Yes. And you can hear the surf. Yeah. Now, look carefully where I'm pointing my finger. You see those two lights far out on the water? Yes, Professor. Watch them. They are buoy lights marking the passage between the island and Dead Man's Reef beyond. I see them, but but they're moving. Exactly, young man. Buoy lights moving. And now, you see those other lights off in the distance? Yes. Those are the running lights of a ship. A ship with men on it. Now you'll see how Deutsch gets the men to dig in his radium. Look out there. Do you see two light boys? Yes, Dr. Browning, I do. But wait. Are they moving or am I imagining things? You are not imagining anything. Those lights are moving. But if they're boys, why are they moving? Shouldn't they be anchored? Indeed they should, Jimmy. But in a moment you will know why they move. Now, look to the left. Do you see those other lights? Yes? Yep, I see him. Those are the lights of a ship. A ship with men on it. From ships like this come the men who are chained together to slave in Deutsch's radium mines. Watch and see what happens. Do you mean that Deutsch moves the light buoys that are supposed to mark a safe passage through the reefs? Exactly. Five ships in two months have had their bottoms torn out on those rocks. Most of the men manage to swim to shore. Deutsch and his gang make prisoners of them. But... Dr. Browning, where are those five ships? Wouldn't they remain there on the rocks? Oh, no. No, Deutsch is too smart for that. Five wrecks on one reef would make the maritime authorities suspicious. Then his game would be up. Deutsch has them towed out to sea at high tide, and then he sinks them. You won't find so much as a spar or a timber anywhere. Look, Mr. Kent, the channel buoy lights have stopped moving. Yes, yes, they're set now so that the ship will pile up on the worst part of the reef. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent... We have to stand here and watch it. We can't do a thing. Not a solitary thing. Look, Jimmy, I want to get a better view of what happens. I'm, uh, I'm going down and hide among the rocks on the beach. You stay here with Dr. Browning. I'll be right back. Be careful, Mr. Kent. Oh, I'll just sneak around the side of the cliff a little way where they can't see me. Ah, there now. Maybe I can be in time to keep that ship off the reef as Superman. Up! Up! And away! Meanwhile, aboard the freighter Clarabelle, bearing down on the treacherous rocks of Dead Man's Reef, the officers and crew are unaware of the danger lurking in the darkness dead ahead of them. Evening, Captain. Evening, Mr. Winters. Everything all right? Couldn't be better, sir. We're making ten knots. Very good, mister. Uh, it's hard to believe this is the last time I'll be using the old Clarabelle through Dead Man's Reef. <laughs> I've done oh, it almost 500 times. Now, sir. Uh, It'll be like Charles' place. Now, sir. No, oh, I, I try to enter. No, I used to navigate this ship by dead reckoning in the old days. Before they put those channel lights in to make it easy. Think you could still do it, Captain? <laughs> dead certain I could. But why bother? Eh? <laughs> Just head us straight between the lights. That's all there is to it. Almost as bad as being a landlubber. <laughs> Traffic lights even on the sea, these days. That's right. 
I say, Winters. What's that, sir? Those lights. Hmm? What's the matter with them, sir? <laughs> my, my old tired eyes must be playing tricks on me. How do they look to you? Why, they seem all right. We're heading straight between them, sir. Yeah, that's just it. Somehow, it, it doesn't seem right. They don't seem to be in the same position, the, the right position. But, sir, those lights are inspected every month. And certainly the island doesn't move. Yeah, no. No, I guess you're right. What's that? Why, sounds like... Sounds like, like wind whistling overhead. Captain, and you were right, sir. Those lights were moved. We're heading straight for the reef. The left engines, pull us down. Too late. We've grounded. Wait. I don't think so, sir. Look. Look at the bow swing around. Why, the great hog spoon. It's a miracle. Yes, sir. We're passing the lights. We're back in the channel. Back on the island, Jimmy and Professor Browning, unaware that Superman has taken the situation in hand, look on in amazement as the ship miraculously veers away, its bow barely touching the jagged reef before it swings back on its course, a brief fraction of a second before piling up. Well, it's positively incredible. I can't believe my eyes. That ship stopped as if she'd hit a wall and then swung around as if she were being pushed. Oh, here's Mr. Kent. Say, did you see what happened? Yes, I did. Oh, it was a narrow escape. That ship came within a hair's breadth of going on the rocks. Oh, where were you watching it from? Further down on the beach. Oh, you smell of tar. Huh? Just like the tar they used to caulk seams on shipboard. Do I? Yes, can't you do? Why, your hands are covered with the stuff. Hey, where have you been? Uh, well, I, uh, I was on the beach around the bend there. I, I picked up some seaweed, some kelp. That's probably what it is. Well, kelp doesn't smell like tar, Mr. Kent. Oh, it, it came off the piece of driftwood I was sitting on. Say, let's duck back into that passage before Deutsch's men start nosing around. They'll all be down on the beach in a minute, wondering how the ship escaped. Hey, good idea, Mr. Kent. Uh, come along, Jimmy. Hey, let me lead. I know the way. Professor, do you know exactly what Deutsch plans to do with the radium he's mining on this island? Uh, no, Kent, I don't. He's never told me. Oh. All I know is that he continually speaks of it in conjunction with a master plan, whatever that is. Professor, Deutsch has a room of his own somewhere in that labyrinth of tunnels, hasn't he? A central office? Yes, he has. Good. I want you to lead us to it. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent. That's just what Deutsch wants you to do. Walk right into his trap. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't intend to walk in, Jimmy. I'd just like to find a place where I could listen. Maybe find out a little more of what kind of madness Deutsch is up to. Yeah, he's cunning, Kent. And ruthless. Oh. You won't learn much from him. Well, we might, if we're patient. And lucky. And aren't discovered first. Well, I can show you a passageway that crosses directly over Deutsch's room. Will that do? That might do fine. All right. Now, now quiet, both of you. Quiet. We'll have to cross this tunnel, and it's going to be illuminated. We don't want anyone to catch us, not now. Look, look, back there at the entrance of the tunnel. Some of Deutsch's henchmen sent to capture those sailors they expected. Yes. All right, now, quickly. Around this corner. Follow me. Right. They've seen us. Down this passage. Quickly. Hurry, hurry. Now, don't wait for me. I can't keep up. Nonsense, Professor. Here, grab my arm. We'll run together. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Quickly now. In this door. Right. There we are. Well, look, Dr. Browning. Look what's in this room. Books. Nothing but books. Hundreds and hundreds of books. Just stacked up on the floor. Gosh, hmm? what can they be doing with all these books? I don't know, but we'd better lay low for a while. They'll be looking for us, and this time... If we're caught... Meanwhile, in Deutsch's headquarters, carved deep in the rock of Volcano Island, the news that Jimmy, Kent, and Professor Browning have been seen has not yet been reported. Hans is explaining the loss of the ship to his chief. But, Herr Doctor, it is true. I saw it with my own eyes. The ship stopped short only 20 feet in front of the reef. I saw it had struck. It stopped so quickly. And then I saw it swing around like, like it was being pushed. It is incredible, Hans. You are trying to cover up your own failure with a fantastic lie. But ships do not stop short unless they strike something. They do not swing around unless something pushes them. Tell me, Hans, how does your fertile imagination explain such a phenomenon? I do not know, Herr Doctor. I do not know. I only tell you what I saw. But one of the men claims he saw a mysterious figure swoop down and dive under the ship just before it stopped. Hans, so short. what do you take me for a child that you tell me such daring stories? 
You know what this failure to get that ship means, Hans. Yeah, yes, Doctor. It I know. means we have no additional men to work in the radium mine. But what can we do? I'll show you what we can do. Hello. Hello. Bring Professor Browning to me at once. Now at once. Twelve ounces of radium. That is all we need. Then we are masters over all men. It requires twelve ounces of radium, Hans. And you will get it for me. Or else... Yeah, here, Doctor. I will get it. Good. How long do the men work now? They dig for ten hours each day. Starting today, it is fifteen hours, Hans. Do you hear me? Fifteen hours. But, Doctor, they cannot stand it. We cannot give them enough food as it is. Or enough sleep. They work underground. The air is foul. Twelve ounces of radium, Hans. Tons of the pitch blend. Hundreds of tons. Thousands even. Pour it into the machine. The acid vats, they should be full 24 hours a day. The reduction tanks, they will never stop. Day and night. Night and day until we have enough. Doctor, if the machines break down under the terrible strain, then even the men who dig cannot help us. Do not worry about that. Professor Browning will fix them. I have put a gun in his back before, and I will do it again. Yeah? Hello? What is Browning has escaped. How could that be? Yeah. The door was unbolted. But who? Never mind, never mind. He must be somewhere in his passages. Find him. I don't care how you do it, but find him and alive. I heard her, Doctor. Browning gone. Just when we need him most. And you are responsible for this. How do these things happen? First the boy escapes. Now even the professor is gone. Can you do nothing? The doctors, they have been sighted in tunnel number seven. Yes. Tunnel number seven. I have an idea. I can catch three birds. In one net. Hello. Hello. I have new orders for you. Now listen carefully. Steal all the entrances to tunnel number seven. Do you understand? Turn off all the lights. And then reverse the ventilation machine. Yeah? I said reverse them. Pump the air out of tunnel number seven. Are safe in here, Professor Browning? Yeah, I don't know, Jimmy. We'll have to take a chance on this. I hope this is our lucky day. Well, you know, there must be thousands of books here in this room. I wonder what Deutsch plans to do with so many books. Say, look at what somebody's done to this book, Mr. King. Well, well, there's a square hole cut right through the pages. Same with this one. And this one. Well, they're all like that. Well, you're right, Jimmy. Every one of them is mutilated in the same way. That's odd. Odd. It's amazing. Have you noticed that each one of these holes is exactly the same size? Yes, about two inches square. Cut right through the book, except for ten pages at the beginning and ten at the end. With the book closed, you'd never even guess there was anything peculiar about it. You know, Kent, those little square hollows are perfect hiding places for something small and very valuable. Such as a little lead container filled with radium? Mr. Kent, I think you've got the answer. But why would Deutsch want to hide the radium in books? Why would he want to hide it at all? I don't know, Jimmy, but I believe Deutsch has found a new way to use radium. To unleash the energy in the radium atom. If this is so, he has in his grasp the most powerful destructive force humanity has ever known. Why, the atomic energy in one ounce of radium could blow the United States off the map. And Deutsch is trying to get 12 ounces of it. What's that? I've heard that motor hum before. They're closing the stone doors leading from this tunnel. Something's up. Gosh, there go the lights. Yes, we'd better get out while we can. Let's try this door. We're locked in. What are we going to do now? Attention, Herr Browning. What's that? It's Deutsch talking on the public address system. Listen. I know you are hiding somewhere off tunnel number seven. And I'm pleased to inform you that you and your friends are trapped. I have closed all the doors to the tunnel. And now we'll turn off the ventilator blowers. Soon you will find yourselves without air. Do you follow me? The swine. I didn't think even he was low enough to do anything like this. However, Herr Professor, since I still have need of your services, I am willing to offer you and whoever is with you a chance to live. Under the loudspeakers through which my voice is coming, you will find a push button. If you wish to remain alive, press this button. This will indicate to me which room you are in. I will send for you. You have 30 seconds to choose between life and death. 30 seconds. Uh, wait, Professor. Don't touch that button. What else can I do, Kent? There is no choice for myself. I would rather die, but I, I can't sacrifice you and Jimmy. There must be some other way. Let me think. 15 seconds to go, Herr Professor. 
Ten seconds. I can't stand this, Kent. Let me press the button. No, don't touch it. Get down on the floor. <sighs> what will that accomplish? Do as I say. Get down. You too, Jimmy. Your time is up. I am cutting off the air. Kent, you see? He's going to murder us. Take it easy, Professor. And keep low. The air will be fresher near the floor. What's that hum, Mr. Kent? Sounds like a ventilator blower. It is. But Deutsch probably has it running in reverse, drawing the good air off. It's getting close already. You all right, Jimmy? I don't know. My head feels light. Kent, you should have let me... Let me press the button. No air now. We are suffocating. Can't breathe. Kent. Kent. Uh, he's out. I wonder how long Jimmy can take it. Jimmy. Jimmy. Uh, out too. Good. Now I can get to work as Superman. I'll have that door broken down in a moment. Here goes. What's that? Sounds like a dog barking. What? It's coming from under the floor. It must be Storm. Here now. Right under this pile of books. Now just clear them away. There must be an opening of some sort here. Yes, here it is. Trap door. Here's the handle. One good pull should tear that loose. Now. There we are. Storm. Storm. It's an abandoned passageway. Now to get the professor and Jimmy out of here. Better not let them see me as Superman. Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Wake up. Uh, what, what's happened? You fell asleep when the air went bad. Take a few deep breaths now. Gosh, it feels good. I remember now. Why'd you turn the air off? Did he turn it on again? No, Jimmy. I found a way out. A trap door. And guess who led me to it? Storm. I heard him whining under the floor. Oh, good old Storm. Where is he? In a narrow passageway under the trap door. Come on, now. Give me a hand to the professor. Okay. I'll take his shoulders. He sure is out cold. Yeah. Now, hold him here, Jimmy. I'll drop into the passageway, then you slide him down to me, will you? Mm-hmm. Here I go. All right, now. Let him down easy. Easy, Jimmy. So I can get a good grip on him. All right, I got it. Okay, Jimmy. Let yourself down now. Hang on the edge and then let go. I'll catch you. Here I come. Look out. There you are. Oh, boy. It sure feels good to get out of that point. Yeah. Professor. Professor, you all right? I... I think so, Ken. Oh, good. Now, this tunnel must be an abandoned entrance. Or maybe an emergency exit for Deutsch. Look, Mr. Kent. Yes? You can see the beach and the ocean from here. Sure, Jimmy. And it certainly looks good. Yes, but uh, how did we get here? Uh, there's no time for explanations, Professor. Now, you stay here with Jimmy and Storm. I'm going back into the tunnel and look around. There must be an entrance to the main passage through this corridor. Mr. Kent, please don't go back in there. You'll get caught. Now, don't you worry, Jimmy. I'll be careful. You wait here for me. I'd like to sneak up on my friend Deutsch as Superman and get some more information. Should be a passage linking up with Deutsch's private office. Ah, here's that ladder I noticed on our way out. I'll see what it leads to. Hmm. This is a short corridor. Dead end on both sides. No. Wait. Voices. Coming through this door, set into the side of the passage. Yes, and familiar voices. Deutsch and Hans. It's getting late, Hans. See if you can't take contact with the other wavelength. I will try, Herr Doctor. Ah, I have him. Here. Are the earphones, Herr Doctor? Quickly, give them to me. This should be interesting. Hello? Hello? Yeah, this is Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. Good. Now listen closely. You are to have the boat ten miles out to sea, due west of the coast. I will be two men on board, so there will be no suspicion. We will dispatch a radio control seaplane immediately with a shipment of books. Understand? Perfect. Bye. Now quickly, Hans. Go to the hangar upstairs and load the plane for a takeoff immediately. Stand up. Yeah, well, Herr Doctor. I go. Fire two shots when you're ready for me to send off the plane. Yeah, Herr Doctor. So, the hangar is upstairs, eh? Hmm. Ah, oh, yes. Let's see, a ladder leads up from here. Well, here's where we get off this island on that plane and kill two birds with one stone. Professor! Jimmy! Yes, uh, what's up, Ken? Any luck, Mr. Ken? You bet. They're loading up a radio-controlled plane for a takeoff, and we're going to be in it. Well, Come on, now. Follow me. Gosh, Mr. Ken, where's it going? We'll meet a boat offshore. 
All right. Here's the iron ladder. Now, you go first, Professor. And then you, Jimmy. Be careful. All right, Jim, go ahead. That's it. Up we go. Get out of the way, Jimmy. Now, here we are. Now, there's the door over there. Now, be very quiet. I'm going to open it very gently. Now, here, Jimmy. Look through the crack. What do you see? Jiminy, Mr. Kent. Amanda's getting ready to load some books into a plane. He's alone. Yes. It's Hans. Mr. Kent, look at that cliff wall. It's open like a huge door. Yes, the same opening we saw the plane disappear into when we landed on the island. All right, now. When I count three, we make a dash for it. Overpower Hans and pile into that ship. Okay, I'm with you. I All hope right. we make it. Ready now. One, two, three. Uh, <laughs> Hey, that takes care of our friend Hans. Get into the plane, Jimmy. All right, get in, Professor. Mr. Kent, he's conscious. Look out, he's going to shoot. What? There, that'll fix you. All right, come on, into the plane. I, quick. I can't, Kent. I, I can't. The I... Professor, he's wounded. All right, quick, Jimmy. I'll carry the Professor. Hurry. All right, now. Slam the door. Mr. Ken, it'll be dark soon, and we've been flying a long time. Do you think we're almost there? I think so, Jimmy. You'd better go back into the rear compartment and see how the professor's getting along. I'll watch for the boat. Okay, Mr. Kent. Professor Browning seems awfully restless, tossing and mumbling in his sleep. Well, he's had a tough time of it. I hope we can get him to the mainland soon. Too bad we can't even make the professor comfortable. There aren't even enough seats in this ship. Well, this is a cargo plane. It's not designed to carry passengers... Deutsch probably never used it for anything but ship his radium. Twelve ounces? Well, I could carry that in my pocket. Oh, no, you couldn't. Radium is packed in quarter grams. You know, it's powerful stuff. It can only be carried in lead cylinders, and if Deutsch put one cylinder in a book, well, that makes a lot of books. I wonder why Deutsch hasn't turned this plane around, Mr. Kent. Hans must have gotten to him by this time. Mm, it'd be a simple matter for him to turn it around and bring it back to the island. Gosh, why hasn't he done it? I'm not sure. But I've been thinking about that, even though I didn't mention it to you. I've got a hunch he's radioed the boat to take care of us when we land. What do we do, Mr. Kent? I don't know yet, Jim. We just have to sit tight and trust to luck. Oh. What is it, Storm? Oh, look, Mr. Kent. The professor's up. Professor, you're wounded. Lie down. Yeah. Leave me alone, Dyke. Leave me alone. Radium. Pounds of it. That's what you want. Pounds of radium. Professor. No, don't touch me, Dyke. Don't. Please, Professor, lie down. Dungeon. Must get out. Got to Mr. Kent, he collapsed. Stay here, Jimmy. Hold Storm, will you? How is he, Mr. Kent? Well, he's... He's not suffering anymore. You mean... Yes, Jim. It's better that way. Much better. Poor old man. I kind of liked him. Yes, yeah, so did I. What's that down below? The lights of a boat. Do you think that's the one? Must be. We're starting to slow down and circle for a landing. Well, now for the fireworks. Gosh, do you think they know we're on this plane? Can't tell yet. We'll find out in a few minutes. What do we do? Give them a good fight? No, Jimmy. Let them take us aboard. Maybe they'll sail us to the mainland. Then we'll have half a chance anyway. All right, brace yourself, Jimmy. We'll hit the water any minute. Okay. Come here, Storm. Let me hold you. Two men are pulling away from the boat in the dinghy. Must be members of the crew, Jimmy. Gee, these are tough-looking birds. Uh, don't you worry. If they don't know we're on board, we've got to jump on them. Do you suppose Hans and Deutsch have warned them to expect us? Somehow I don't think so, Jim. The moon is bright enough so I can see from here they're not armed. If they're expecting to find anything except a cargo full of radium-loaded books, they'd carry guns. Gee, I hope you're right. All right, now listen carefully, Jimmy. We'll hide in this compartment in the tail of the plane. As soon as they both get in... We'll rush them. All right, come on now. Out of this compartment. All right, keep her steady, Joe, while I climb up on the wing. I'll hand the stuff over to you. Okay. I got it. What? For the love of... Hey, something's fishy. What do you mean? The plane's plain empty. Ah, go on, you fat. All right, come up and see for yourself, wise guy. Well, I'll be... 
Hey, this don't make sense. There's supposed to be a load of books on Sure, books. same as the other times. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a dog. Look out, here he comes. Uh, take him in his teeth, Bill. Hey, don't you kick him. Look, it's a kid and a big guy. All right, yeah. try and stop this one, mister. Oh, oh get it. Yeah, Look out behind you, Mr. Kent. All right. Yeah, that'll hold you for a while. Gosh, Mr. Kent, you've knocked them both cold. Oh, did I? Well, I, I guess they both stepped right into my wild punches. All right, come on now, Jimmy. Help me lower them into the dinghy. I'll get in first. All right. All right, Jimmy. Roll him over. Okay, I've got him. There. Now, next one. That's it. There now. Okay, come on, Jimmy. Jump for it. Storm's here with me. Here I come. Atta boy. Gosh, Mr. Kent. You're almost as strong as Superman. Oh, nonsense, Jimmy. Here, quickly, give me the oars. Here they are. Good thing it's dark. Maybe we'll be able to get on board without the rest of the crew seeing us. What happened? Where are we? Take it easy. You're aboard your boat. Who are you, anyway? How'd you two get on that plane? That's none of your business. Now, just remember this. From now on, I'm running things, and you're taking orders from me. That's what you think. We take our orders from the boss and nobody else, see? Who is your boss? Don't tell him, Joe. What do you take me for, a sap? I ain't telling him nothing. Well, the only thing to do is turn you two specimens over to the police. They'll make you talk. We ain't done nothing. Ever hear of Dr. Deutsch? Who? Dr. Deutsch. I never heard of him. Me neither. Ask them why they brought the boat out here, Mr. You King. You keep your nose out of this, kid. Yeah. Why did you bring your boat to this spot? Because we like to ride on the ocean, that's why. Sure, we like the breezes. Uh, I can see we're wasting time. Get up on your feet, both of you. I said get up on your feet. Okay, I'll get you up. Oh, you're breaking my arm. Stand up. Okay, okay. That's better. Now, pay attention. This boat must have a shortwave sending set. Where is it? We got one, but it's on a blink. If it wasn't, mister, the boss would have told us to meet you with bullets. Shut up, Bill. I see. Where is the radio? In a deck house, but it won't do you no good. I'll find that out for myself. Jimmy? Yes, Mr. Kent? Hand me that length of rope. This one? That's it. Now, turn around, you two. Did you hear what I said, or do I have to demonstrate? All right, all right. You don't have to get tough. Hold your hands behind your backs. That's right. Now, a few turns of this rope around your wrist. Take it easy. There, a couple of good knots. Why, it's going to be safe for a while, tied together like Siamese twins. You won't talk so big when a boss hears about this. Oh, you have no idea how anxious I am to meet your boss face to face. Yeah. But in the meantime, we'll have to content ourselves with your company. Now, March. Where are you taking them, Mr. Kent? We'll dump them in the stern compartment for the time being. I want to see whether I can get that radio working. If not, we'll run the boat to the naval base. What about poor Professor Browning on the plane? I'll take care of that. Don't worry, Jimmy. He'll get a decent burial. All right, start walking, gentlemen. And don't try any funny work. Through the deck house and into the stern compartment. I guess it's all right to leave Storm out here, isn't it, Mr. Kent? He's fast asleep or over by the rail. Oh, sure. He'll be all right. All right, here we are. Open that door to the stern compartment, Jimmy. Ah, this looks comfortable enough. Step inside. Now, remember, both of you, don't get any bright ideas or you're liable to wind up with very bad headaches. I'll see you later. Now, Jimmy, let's see about that shortwave set. I bet they were lying. I bet it worked. I don't think so, Jim. If it worked, Deutsch would have contacted them to tell them we were on our way. Now, here it is. Let's see now. This must be the power switch. There's a hum... Does that mean it works? Yeah, it means there's power, but the sending apparatus may be out of order. Is that tube lit? No, I don't think so. But this one is. No. Four of them are lit, and two aren't. That's the trouble, I guess. Well, then we can't send a message to the naval base, huh? I don't know. We may be able to send and not receive. I'll try it anyway. Calling the naval base. Calling the naval base. Come in, please. Anything doing? No, not yet. Calling the naval base. Calling the naval base. Come in. Come in, please. Calling the naval base. Calling the naval base. Unable to determine whether or not his voice is going out over the airwaves, Clark Kent repeats the call again and again. Meanwhile, in the stern compartment, the two members of the boat's crew speak in low, hushed voices. We've got to get off of this tub, Bill. If we don't, we're going to get tossed in a clink. Yeah, but how are we going to get off? Through the stern hatch. You don't know about it. You crazy? What are we going to do? Swim with our hands tied? Not me. Not so loud. We ain't gonna swim. We'll get out to the stern hatch, sneak up to the deck house, and cock up. With our hands tied, I suppose. Our hands won't be tied, dope. Now, stand close to me. Yeah, that's it. Now, slip your fingers into my back pocket. Okay? A knife. You got it? 
Open it up. Okay. She's open. Back up to me. I'll cut the rope. Good thing this knife is sharp. Okay, you're free. Now get me loose, will you? That's a... Now we'll fix that mug, whoever he is. Hey, wait a minute. Listen, Joe, I ain't so keen on tangling with him. Not without guns. And they're in the deck house. Anyway, remember what we got told? If anything happens, get rid of the boat, remember? Yeah, so what? Well, maybe we better get rid of it. Well, what about us? We can scram in the dinghy. There ain't no sea running. We can make sure easy. Oh, we get the dinghy off the stern. Easy. Oh. It's pitch dark now. He won't see us. All right. But what do we do about the boat, Scuttler? Nah, it takes too long. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? There's some cotton waste and a gallon of kerosene. We'll douse it and set fire to it. It's a good idea, but make it fast. <laughs> Spread it around good, Bill. Okay. Okay. Boy, will this tub go up? Now, stand back, Bill. We're going to light this match. All ready? Let her go. Right. Calling the naval base. Calling the naval base. Come in, please. I guess it's not working. Those two guys said it wasn't on the blink. Yeah, I'm afraid they were right, Jimmy. We're getting power, but I don't think our signal's going out. Well, might as well turn it off. No sense wasting battery. Now what, Mr. Ken? Are we going to run the boat into the naval base? I'm wondering, Jimmy. Those two birds we've got on the stern compartment said they only took orders from their boss. I'd like very much to find out who their boss is. Oh, Dr. Deutsch. He's the head of the espionage ring, isn't he? I don't think they were referring to Deutsch. I have a feeling there's one important member of this gang we haven't bumped into yet. I don't remember whether I told you or not, but Deutsch and Hans made good their escape from the naval base after we captured them on the Grayson submarine because of a forged order. Oh, I remember that. Someone forged Commander Lee's name. That's right. And now that someone must have been at the naval base at the time, working hand in hand with Deutsch. Do you think maybe he's the boss those two guys meant? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. So it might be a good plan to just sit here and wait for the boss to show up. Well, what makes you think he'll do that, Mr. Kent? Gosh, we could be floating out here in the ocean for days. Well, now let's see if we can reason it out logically. This much we know. Volcano Island has the largest deposits of radium-producing ore in the world. And Deutsch and his men are mining it as fast as they can. And he's been shipping the radium off the island hidden in books. And that's how we got to this boat. In the radio control plane that was supposed to be carrying some of the books. Exactly. That plane we were in was supposed to be carrying radium to this boat. But why? Gee, I don't know. There must be a reason. Obviously, Deutsch wanted the radium transported to another place. Oh, why didn't he just send the plane to that place? Ah, now we're coming to it. Because it's probably a place where either the plane can't land... or where the police might get suspicious if they saw it. Say. For example, a city like Metropolis... Imagine the crowds that would gather if a radio-controlled plane dropped out of the sky and taxied into the Metropolis airport. I get what you're driving at, Mr. Kent. Deutsch was just transferring the radium to this boat, and then this boat would dock someplace, and then the radium would be picked out. Jimmy, you have all the makings of a good Sherlock Holmes. Now, can you see why it might be wise for us to sit tight and wait? Oh, sure. This boat doesn't come into shore and dock soon. The boss, whoever he is, is going to come out and look for it. That's a bullseye, Jimmy. Yes, but there's only one thing. What? Aren't we liable to drift out to sea or something? Oh, I don't think so. There's no wind and very little tide. I've been keeping an eye on the compass. What's that? What? The plane! The one we came in! Look! It's rising from the water! Which is using the radio control to bring it back to Volcano Island. Oh, Mr. Kent, we've got to stop it. Professor Browning's body is in the cabin. We can't stop it now, Jimmy. Even if we could, I don't think it would be wise. I want Deutsch to believe we're being held on this boat. That'll make him careless and easier to lay our hands on. There's nothing we can do for Professor Browning now. I guess you're right. Oh, look, Mr. Kent, here's Storm. The plane motor must have wakened him. Hiya, Mike. He's the whimperingest dog I ever came across, Jimmy. <laughs> Think he's got a perpetual stomachache. Oh, what's the matter, Storm? What is it, old fella? Oh, look at him, Mr. Kent. He's sniffing around the deck house. Must be something there he doesn't like. Oh, well, that's too bad. We'll get him a 30-room mansion with hot and cold running water. Oh, no, I'm not kidding, Mr. Kent. <laughs> He just barked at the door leading to the stern compartment. Do you think maybe those two guys are up to something? Not the way I tied them up. Well, I'm going to take a look. All right, Storm. Now stop barking. I'll open the door. Mr. Kent, the boat's on fire. Great Scott, slam the door. What do we do, Mr. Kent? What do we do? Don't lose your head now, Jimmy. But, but we're burning up ten miles from shore. Take Storm and go up to the front of the boat. I'll put the fire out. How? With an extinguisher. Now, do as I say. Hurry. Did you see that fire? The whole cabin's in flames. Don't stand there discussing it with me. Take your dog and go up front and stay there until I come for you. Now, go on. Well, all right, but it looks bad. Come on, Storm. Just keep calm, Jimmy. We'll get out of this. Gosh, I hope so. 
I'll turn out this deckhouse light so he can't see me from the bow. <sighs> he was plenty right. No extinguisher could stop that fire. But Superman can. Now, let's see what it looks like. Oh, it's a blazing inferno. How did it ever get so far without our noticing it? Well, it's got to be stopped before it reaches the gas tanks and blows us sky high. Here goes. Oh, never felt anything so hot. Like the inside of a furnace. Good thing this cape is fireproof. I can use it to smother the flame. There, that does the trick. Part of it's out. Now to tackle the rest. No, wait. It's burning beneath the floor. Right near the gas tanks. I hope I'm not too late. I hope I... A tongue of flame leaping high into the darkness, a thunderous explosion, and the boat rises from the sea like a thing alive, hangs suspended for a moment, and then bursts into a thousand glowing fragments that drop back into the water, hissing like snakes. Uninjured even by the deadly force of the explosion, Superman swims through a white-hot pool of flaming gasoline, his keen eyes scanning the floating debris. His only thought, the safety of young Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy! Jimmy! Where are you, Jimmy? If he's lost, I'll never forgive myself. Jimmy! Jimmy! No human could live in this burning gas. There's only one slim chance. The explosion hurled him clear of the gasoline. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, for the first time since I've been on Earth, I'm helpless. I don't know what to do, where to look. Jimmy! Jimmy! He's gone. He's gone. No, wait. What's that floating over there near the cushion? It can't be. Yes, it is. It's Jimmy. Hold on, boy. There. I've got you, Jimmy. Ah, oh, just relax. You're safe now. Yes, I know, but you're all right. What happened? Poor Mr. King. He's all right, too, Jimmy. Oh, thank goodness. Thank... Oh. oh, poor kid. All he was worried about was me. I don't think he's been hurt much, but I'd better get him on dry land. Up! Up! And away! <laughs> Certainly is good to know that he's safe. I never expected to see him again. How he ever escaped serious injury is a miracle. Ah, there's the shoreline below. I'll just land and give him a chance to come to. Down! Down! There. That's better. Now to bring him around is Clark Kent. Jimmy! Oh, had a uh, boy. Wake up. Oh, poor Mr. Kent. Hey, wait a minute, young fella. What do you mean, poor Mr. Kent? What makes you think I'm poor? It's explosion. Mr. Kent was in the... Ex- Oh, what's the matter, Jimmy? Well, you, you didn't get exploded. What? When the boat... You didn't... Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, it, it blew up, but <laughs> whoa, you didn't... Oh, now, whoa, take it easy. You're talking Greek. Oh, Mr. Kent, I'm so glad to see you in one piece. Thanks, Jimmy. Oh, how'd you escape? When the boat exploded, you were right in the middle of it. I can't believe my eyes. I guess we were both born under lucky stars, Jimmy. How do you feel? A little groggy, but I'm okay. What happened? Well, the fire must have gotten to the gas tanks, and they blew up. I found myself floating in the water right next to you. I remember now. Someone talked to me. It must have been you. Uh-huh. How did we get here on shore? Oh, I swam in with you. You're not very heavy. You mean you swam ten miles carrying me? Well, it didn't seem like ten miles. Gee, Mr. Kent, you're a superman. Oh, just a poor imitation, Jim. Oh, now the question is, where do we go from here? I haven't had a chance to look around to find out where we are. Say, you know something? What? Look at the shoreline of this cove. Doesn't it look familiar? Not to me. Look over there to my left. See that cliff that juts out into the water? Yes. What's on that cliff? A house. Oh, I know where we are. That's the big house Dr. Deutsch was using as a hideout. And this is the cove where he had his radio-controlled plane anchored. The plane I got into. That's right. Well, it sure is a coincidence that we happen to get back here. Not so much of a coincidence now that I think about it. That boat was told to be ten miles west of this cove. Well, now that we know where we are, I guess we'd better hike to the main road and thumb a ride into town. No sense sitting here. You think you can make it? Oh, sure I can. Wait a minute. What? Huh. Where's Storm? Your dog? I'm afraid he was lost, Jimmy. You mean out there in the ocean? I'm afraid so. Oh, gosh. That makes me feel awful. He's an awful funny-looking dog, Mr. Kent, but he was smart. He warned us about the fire. Yes, he did. Now, don't think about it, Jim. I'll get you another dog. That isn't that, Mr. Kent. Just that it doesn't seem fair. Storm wasn't much of a dog, but he never hurt anybody. He was a nice mutt. All he wanted was someone to pat him once in a while. I know, Jim. Now, shall we go now? We've got a long walk. All right. Wait. Hold it, Jimmy. What's the matter? 
just saw the headlights of a car coming along the dirt road through the woods. It stopped. Get down behind this bush. Shh. Do you think it's someone important? I don't know, but anyone coming down to this deserted cove at night deserves to be looked over. Maybe it's one of Deutsch's gang. That's allowed. Whoever it is is coming down to the shore. Now keep low. It's a man. Yeah. Yeah, he's got something hidden in the bushes right at the water. What is it, Mr. Kent? Can't see it yet. He's dragging it out. It's a speedboat. Be quiet. Gosh, Mr. Kent. I'll bet he's the boss. And I'll bet he's going out to look for the big boat. I'm going to grab him, Jimmy. Now you stay here and don't make a sound. I'll crawl up on him and get him before he knows what's happened. Now don't move on my... Oh, oh no, you don't. This should quiet you. Uh, it did. Okay, Jimmy. Gosh, you sure popped him, Mr. Kent. Who is he? Get that flashlight he dropped and shine it in his face. Okay, I hope it still works. There you are, right in his face. Great Scott. What's the matter, Mr. Kent? Why, it's Lewis, the Secret Service man. Who? Lewis, the Secret Service man attached to the naval base. I thought Deutsch had gotten rid of him. Tip this handkerchief in the water, Jimmy, and we'll try and bring him to. All right. Here you are. Thanks. I could have sworn Lewis was dead. When did you see him last, Mr. Kent? Almost a week ago. Don't you remember he called for me at the Daily Planet office to drive me to the naval base? Oh, that's right. And then neither of you showed up at the base. We stopped off to take a look at Deutsch's hideout up on the cliff. And the caretaker of the house told us Deutsch was operating from a shack back there in the woods. Lewis and I sneaked up on the shack, and there were some shots, and that was the last I saw of him. Oh, he's coming too, Mr. Yeah. Kent. Boy, look at that lump on his jaw. Put the handkerchief again, Jimmy, will you? Okay. Oh. Oh. What do you oh. think he was doing oh. down here at this time of night, Mr. Kent? Thanks. I don't know, Jimmy. Oh, what hit me? I'm afraid I did, Lewis. Oh. Prop the light up on that piece of driftwood, Jimmy, so he can see us. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Kent! Hello, Lewis. Kent, what are you doing here? I suppose I could ask the same question. I'd given you up for dead. Uh, I came pretty close to cashing in, Kent. That night we rushed Archer's shack. I stopped a bullet, but I managed to crawl into the woods before they could find me. That was less than a week ago. How was it you're up and around? Well, it was just a flesh wound, and it healed fast. But what about you? Do you realize the police of five states are trying to locate you? What in heaven's name are you doing here, and... Who's this boy with you? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Jimmy Olson, our head copy boy on the paper. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Lewis. Hello, Jimmy. Now, Kent, please unravel this thing for me. I don't mind the wallop you gave me, despite the fact that I'll feel it for days. But I must know how you happen to be here. That's a long story, Lewis. Suppose you tell me yours first. Why the uh, midnight trip in a hidden speedboat? Well, you see, we got a report that one of Deutsch's boats was laying ten miles offshore. And I was going out to investigate. Did you hear that, Mr. Kent? Well, do you know something about the boat? I oh, know something. Oh, we were on it. It blew up Just right... Just a minute, Jimmy. Did you plan to go out after that boat alone, Lewis? Oh, of course not. Two Coast Guard cutters are looking for it now. I was going to join them. Well, they won't find it. Because it blew up about 20 minutes ago. Blew up? But, but the boy said you were on board. We were. Kent, this doesn't make sense. If you were on the boat and it blew up 10 miles offshore, how did you and the boy reach land? We were very lucky. What were you doing on the boat in the first place? Well, you see, Lewis, I've learned a lot about our friend Dr. Deutz since I last saw you. He's operating from a place called Volcano Island, some 500 miles out to sea. What's he doing there? Mining radium. Radium? That's right. He needs 12 ounces of radium to work his so-called master plan. Jimmy and I were on the island, and we escaped in a plane that was supposed to be carrying radium concealed in books to this boat you're talking about. There were two men on the boat. We overpowered them and tied them up in the stern compartment. They kept talking about their boss, so we decided to hang around and see whether the boss would eventually show up. Oh, you mean Dr. Deutsch? Oh, no. No, not Deutsch. There's another boss. Who? Well, to make a long story short, our two prisoners got loose, set the boat on fire, and escaped in a dinghy. Before I could stop the fire, it reached the gas tanks, and she blew up. Fortunately, both Jimmy and myself were thrown clear, and we swam to shore. Is Deutsch still on this volcano island? That's where we left him, together with his gang. Oh, then all we have to do is surround the island and get them. Oh, no, it isn't as easy as all that. A dead volcano on the island has been carved into a labyrinth of tunnels and rooms. They could hold out for months. Not against aerial bombs. We could blow it off the face of the earth. I'd rather not see that done, Lewis. In the first place, the pitch blend mines on the island are the best source of radium in the world. And since radium is such a powerful weapon against so many human diseases, well, it would be a crime to destroy them. In the second place, Deutsch and his men should be captured alive and made to stand trial so that the world will realize that we, here in America, refuse to tolerate dictators. Uh, perhaps you're right. Well, what do you suggest? 
I've been thinking of how to trick Deutsch into revealing his master plan before he's captured, but it means going back to the island. I'll go with you, Kent. Oh, gosh, don't leave me out. I'm afraid you'll have to be left out, Jimmy. This is dangerous business. Oh, please, Mr. Kent. I've been in on it all along and nothing happened to me. Well, we can't count on miracles, Jim. Oh, gee, that's not fair. I think we'd better get going, Kent. Right. I'll have to arrange for a seaplane, and that may take some time. Uh, my car is parked on the road. I've got to get to a phone and call Mr. White at the office. He must have given us up for lost. Oh, please, Mr. Kent. Couldn't I go along with you, please? I think you've had enough excitement to last you a long time, Jim. I won't bother you. Honest, I won't. Uh, here's the car. Hop in. Okay. Please, Mr. Kent. No, Jimmy. Very White speaking. Mr. White, this is Clark Kent. Kent? Well, where in the name of heaven are you? In a drugstore telephone booth. I just called to tell you that Jimmy and I are all right. Well, it's about time. Where have you been? Well, it's a long story, Mr. White. Then you'd better come in and write it. That's what we're paying you for, to write stories, not to banish for five days. If you're not in this office in 30 minutes, you're fired. Now, wait a minute, Mr. White. You don't understand. All I understand is that you've kept me up day and night worrying about you. But, Mr. White, I've located Dr. Deutsch. Huh? What? He's on an island. Lewis, the Secret Service man, is arranging for a seaplane to take us both to the island immediately. That's what you think. Mr. White, it'll be a tremendous scoop for the Daily Planet if we catch Deutsch. I don't care about the scoop. There's something a lot more important on my mind. You don't understand, Mr. White. Then I'll tell you. I have something personal to settle with Do- Rat Deutsch. I'm going along with you. But, but, but you can't. Oh, is that so? Well, if I don't go, you don't go. And that's final. Okay. The dangerous... Listen, you young pup. I was mixed up in dangerous things before you cut your first tooth. Where's the seaplane? Municipal base. I'll be there in ten minutes. And you wait for me. Goodbye. O'Brien. Yes, sir? Call Lost Lane to Naval Base. Tell her we've located Kent and Jimmy Olsen. She'll tell Commander Lee. I'm going out, and I don't know when I'll be back. Yes, sir. Kent, sometimes you amaze me. It's perfectly all right to take this young whippersnapper to an island 500 miles out to sea, but you argue with me over the phone about my going along. Well, Jimmy was supposed to stay behind, but <laughs> he made such a fuss I had to take him. Oh, he did, did he? Well, yeah. How can I ever learn to be a reporter if I don't cover stories, Mr. White? I'll cover you with a good leather strap. Reporter. Everything all right, Lewis? Yes, perfect. I'm following the course you gave me. We could be sighting the island soon. You certainly handle a plane like a veteran. I should, with better than 5,000 hours of flying to my credit. Where do we land? On the island? (laughs) This is a seaplane, Mr. White. It can only land on water. I don't need you to tell me where a seaplane can land. I'm sorry. Kent. Yes? What are those lights up ahead? You see? One red, one green. Where? Just up ahead there. Oh, Oh, yes. Those must be the channel markers near the island. Yeah, that's what they are. Keep clear of them. They mark the reefs. All right. Yeah, I can see the west side of the island now, almost below us. Yes, yes, I see it. Water is deep there. We can land and taxi right up to the beach. How do you know the water's deep? Well, I can tell from the color of it. We're lucky to the moon. Yes, very lucky. Now, hold on. Here we go. brought that plane in perfectly, Lewis. I never thought we'd get close enough to be able to wade into shore. You all right, Jimmy? And you, Mr. White? Oh, sure. Well, I'm a little wet, but that doesn't matter. Now what? Well, I was thinking, Kent, that since you know the island, maybe you'd better go on ahead and see whether everything's clear. Hmm, good idea. Uh, you have a gun on you? Yes. All right. In case anyone discovers you before I return, fire one shot. Uh, hmm? Kent. Yeah? Do you think it's wise to go on alone, unarmed? Why not take Lewis with you? Jimmy and I can wait here. I um, I wouldn't want to leave you and the boy alone, Mr. White. Kent can take care of himself. Of course I can. Chances are everyone on the island's asleep. I don't see any lights. I'll just look around and come back. Just you sit tight. Don't worry. I don't like him going off on his own. Oh, it doesn't bother Mr. Kent. Nobody asked your opinion. And why didn't you go along with him, Lois? You're the only one carrying a gun. For two reasons, Mr. White. Number one, I've got something else to do. Number two... I need the gun for you and our young friend here. Put your hands up, both of you. Oh, what's the meaning of this, Put Lewis? your hands up. That's better. This is your idea of a joke, Lois. This isn't a joke, Mr. White. Far from it. 
You and little Jimmy have stepped into a trap. A trap that has already swallowed your bright reporter, Clark Kent. Now, take a good look at the sky, because it's the last time either of you will see it. All set? Start walking. You You aren't a Secret Service man at all, Lewis. You're a spy. Shut up. Stop here. Now, when I press this buzzer, the stone door will swing open. There we are. Step inside. I said step inside, Mr. White. Yes. Welcome to Volcano Island, Herr White. Go ahead. Good work, Max. Excellent work. You have Kent here, Doctor? Hans is waiting for him with ten men. Come in, Herr White. Are we not old friends? Deutsch, your friends live in sewers and only come out at night. They're called rats. Oh, those are very unkind words, but I forgive you. I will close the door so that we will have more privacy. You had no difficulty, Max? Oh, none at all, Herr Doctor. I would have brought the Lane girl, too, but she's at the naval base. Oh, she is of small importance now. So, this is the boy who has been giving us so much trouble. What is your name? It's none of your business. See, Max, how he mimics his elders? Already he has learned to be insolent. We will fix that, eh? And the boy isn't responsible, Herr Doctor. Responsible or not, he knows too much. He knows enough to despise your kind of human being, Deutsch. That much I can promise you. Go right ahead, Herr Wright. You have something more to say? Nothing I might say would have any effect on you. It is good that you realize that. All my life, Deutsch, I fought against armed warfare, against the needless killing of men. But if it's the only way the decent, self-respecting part of humanity can get rid of you and your henchmen, I'll carry a gun myself. A very pretty speech, eh, Max? But so stupid. (laughs) They all talk that way. They call it democracy. Yes, we call it democracy, and we're proud of it. Enough. We've had enough from you. You're going to get more, whether you like it or not. I said we've had enough. You'll both be thankful for democracy once you're caught. We won't stand you up against a wall and shoot you down. We'll give you a fair trial before a jury. Why don't? Hold your tongue. We'll even give you a lawyer to plead your case. That's democracy, Deutsch. Mr. White, he's got a gun. I'm not afraid of his gun. Why do I shoot you down like a dog? Go ahead. Shoot me down. Shoot. Yeah. What's this, Lewis? No. It couldn't be. How did it happen? Oh, fools that you are. Search every inch of the island. Find him, do you understand? Find him or you suffer. There's something wrong. Kent has escaped. Yowie. Quiet. How did that happen? I can't understand it. Hunt says you overpowered all ten of my men. It's impossible. They were armed to the teeth. I'll find Kent and bring him here. He won't suspect me. A good idea, Max. All right, call up the search for him. I'll handle it alone. Yes. But first, we must get rid of these two. I will have them put in a cell under armed guard. This time, there will be no escape. Hello, Hunt. Send up two men at once. Call off the search for Kent. Never mind the reason. Do as I say. Call all your men back into the tunnel. How? Clear off, Hunt. What have you a signal bell for? Now, ring the drums. Now, Max. The coast will be clear for you. As the clanging bell summons Deutsch's men back into the narrow, man-made tunnels at Honeycomb the Volcano, Clark Kent, having escaped the trap set for him, has returned to the beach where he left Jimmy, Editor White, and Lewis, only to find them gone. Off in the distance, he can hear the bell echoing from the jagged cliffs. But at the moment, his only concern is the whereabouts of his friends. Jimmy? Mr. White, where are you? Oh, sure, this is where I left them. I remember that big boulder. Mr. White? Lewis? They're gone. I wonder could they have waded back to the plane. What's that? Someone's calling me. Over here. Found the boulder. Lewis! Great Scott, man, what happened? Where's Jimmy and Mr. White? They attacked us, Kent. What? Let us through a tunnel. I broke away in the dark and managed to crawl down here. They took White and the boy into a room at the end of the tunnel. Show me where it is. I'll go in after them. So we'll both go, Kent. I managed to hold on to my gun. We may need it. Now, uh, the tunnel's up this way. All right. Can't get over the feeling that Deutsch was tipped off, that we were flying to the island. How could he have been? Only four of us knew. Now, here's the mouth of the tunnel. I'd better lead the way. All right. Are you sure this is the right tunnel, Lewis? Of course I'm sure. You told me you broke away in the dark. This tunnel is illuminated. Shh. They might hear us. Now, here. Stand back a little. I'll press the button that opens this stone door. Good. 
Good work. All right, Kent. Step inside. And don't try anything. I've got the gun in your back. I suspected something like this, Lewis. Nobody's interested in what you suspected. Get inside. Okay. Ah, greetings, Herr Kent. Close the door, Doctor. Yes. So, Herr Kent, again we meet. It is my pleasure, my extreme pleasure. Deutsch, I'm not going to fool with you this time. You've gone a little too far. What have you done with Mr. White and Jimmy Olsen? White and the boy are safe, Kent. Believe me. I wouldn't believe a word that passed your lips, Lewis. Well, Deutsch, where are they? You see this lever, Herr Kent? The moment I pull it, the cell block in which your two friends are being held will flood with water from the sea, and they will drown like rats. Is that what you wish to know? He'll do it, Kent. Be careful. All right. You've saved your skin with another of your murderous devices, but only temporarily. That will be for me to decide. You remember, Kent, I told you when we first met that nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of my master plan. Is the plan ready here, Doctor? Yes. We have enough radium. It is now being packed in capsules. What will be done with the capsules? I see no harm in telling you now, Max. You see this instrument on my desk? It resembles a miniature cannon, eh? Hidden in the lead barrel is a capsule containing one-tenth of a grain of radium. One-tenth of a grain, mind you. Smaller than the head of a pin. Yet powerful enough to melt this whole island into the sea. But how, Herr Doctor? I will tell you how, Max. Radium, like all substances, is made up of atoms. In steel, they give it strength. In wood, the ability to float. But in radium, Max, they give it power. The power to destroy. But how can that power be used? Watch, Max. And you, Herr Kent. I point the little cannon at the glass pitcher across the room. Turn the switch. <laughs> Wunderbar. The pitcher explodes into a million fragments. You have seen enough to convince you that here is the greatest weapon man has created. Within 48 hours, one of my little cannons containing not one-tenth of a grain of radium, but two full ounces will be floating down on the city of London, destroying everything in its path. That's what you think, Deutsch. Stand back, Kent, or I pull the lever. Stand back. Not a chance. You're at the end of your rope. Shoot him, Max. Shoot him, I say. Don't touch that lever, Deutsch. I will. I warned you, Deutsch. Now you'll suffer for it. Yep. Ah. Oh. Kent, pull that lever back before the cell block is flooded. It won't come back. It's jammed. Where's the cell block? Tell me quickly. In the tunnel beneath this one. There's a ladder, but you're too late, Kent. The water's pouring in. Press the button that opens that door. Hurry. Okay. It's suicide, Kent. Don't do it. Might be suicide for you, Lewis. Not for Superman. Ah, this must be the ladder. Yeah. Can hear the water rushing through the tunnel. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, it's coming through here like a mill race. Most of the cells are flooded. I can't possibly tell which one they're in. What's that? Someone calling for help. Up this way. Good thing it's dark down here. Oh, I'd better use Kent's voice. Where are you, Mr. White? Over here. Over here. Hold on, I'm coming. The cell's filling up. Don't worry. As soon as I get these iron bars out of the way. That does it. Now, where's Jimmy? I've got him. He struck his head when the first brush of water came through. All right, hold on to me. Now, we've got to swim for it. The water's over our heads. We'll never make it. Never. We'll make it. Come on. Well, you naval men are the last people I ever expected to see in Deutsch's headquarters here on Volcano Island, Lieutenant. How did you get here? Mr. Kent, the island is ringed with destroyers and coast guard cutters in charge of your friend, Commander Lee. We've rounded up all of Deutsch's gang, including the mastermind himself, who's aboard the commander's own destroyer. But how, how did you know about the island? Who tipped you off? Oh, Commander Leeds has known about it for some time. What? Mr. Lewis made all arrangements for the final stroke. Lewis? He's one of Deutsch's men. He's a dirty spy. Well, he brought us here at the point of a gun, Lieutenant. Well, maybe you'd better answer these ac- accusations yourself, Mr. Lewis. Oh, gladly, Lieutenant. Kent, I'm sorry I had to mislead you, but it was the only way I could assure Deutsch I was working for him. I was the boss you were trying to locate. You see, Kent, I had to do it that way in order to be on the inside and learn the details of Deutsch's master plan. And Commander Leeds knew all about this, Lieutenant? Yes, he knew Lewis was posing as one of Deutsch's men, Kent, but that information couldn't be revealed to anyone. However, it's all over now, so let's get aboard ship where Commander Leeds can thank you personally for everything you've done. Your country is proud of you, Mr. Kent. And so am I, Kent. How you ever managed to get Jimmy and myself out of that flooded cell will always be a mystery to me. Superman couldn't have done better. And so another Superman adventure ends with Dr. Deutsch's espionage ring completely broken. 
But even as Mr. White, Jimmy, and Kent are returning to the mainland on a government destroyer, a new adventure is brewing. An adventure that will take Clark Kent deep into the snowbound forest of the North Country. So be with us again next time to begin the story of Superman and the White Plague. A story of mystery in the frozen North. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature 